Yo, 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 yo! What is up, everybody? I am Jesse Goku, the King of Mexico, El Oso, and today is September 4th, 2020. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You have made it to the fourth day in the ninth level of Jumanji. That is 2020. Now, the Geek Survivor Podcast is now coming to you with 20% less fat, 30% more chips, and 25% more hot air. And this podcast is also brought to you by NoNameNerd.com. Also, thank you to Undersubsidence for providing the music today. Joining us always is our hostess with the mostess, Jace. Yo. The man with the plan, Keyblade Sonic. Hi. And the one, the only, the one with the kinks, Super Jew. That's me. <laughs> and always, a special round of applause. A special thanks to our guest, the one, the only, the infamous, Frank Todero. Yay. You've got him right this time. Oh, no. I, I, I got his name right Monday. I was just fucking with you. All week. <laughs> oh, so, no so the running joke is while we've been talking about having you on the podcast <laughs> the whole week, I always got your last name wrong. And I always got it like something else, like, like it would be Tostitos or... Oh, tortillas or taquito or sounds delicious. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, he's like, My wow, I sound, I sound good. I'll take <laughs> save me a slice of me. <laughs> the, the one I get all the time is, uh, especially if I live next to someone. Uh, my name is Todaro, but it's uh, my neighbor Todaro. Actually, yeah, Todaro. I called you Todoro. 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 I'm like, Todoro's yeah, fine too. Yeah. I was like, yeah, everybody, join us Friday because Frank Totoro will be on here. <laughs> Frank Totoro, gosh. I think he's my, my neighbor. Couple of times, first couple of times by accident, and then it was on purpose. What's that? The first couple of times is by accident, and then <laughs> it was on purpose. Yeah. I don't know who I am anymore any, either, so it's fine. But your I'll last name sounds delicious. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> so tell us. Thank, no, first off, thank you for being on here. Thanks uh, for having me. We are a very small up and coming uh, podcast. We want to give a shout out to our commenters that are here so far. David Mitchell says first. Pachinko says Mexican. Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a secret word. I ah. saw that. I was like, oh, yes. word. You're not supposed to comment the word, guys. Come on. I think y'all should fill in Mr. Tank. Uh, tank. Frank Todero. <laughs> I'll leave Frank the Tank Old today. All right. Frank the Tank Todero. <laughs> On Fridays, We're going I, through do the a, quad. I do a secret. I do a secret word where I'll post right after we start because Goku's too busy to check the chat, so everyone else can see the secret word. And when he does it, it's the whole Pee Wee Herman thing. I love it. But you're not supposed to comment the word because he reads the comments. Yeah, right. So Mitchell says, <laughs> "Applauds loudly." Booty Warriors here. Dandelion's here. Mitchell comments again. It's so great to have the voice actor of Chotaro here. <laughs> oh, Chotaro here. Such a great character in the anime. Don't forget the word. Uh, okay, they also said sunscreen. You're the voice of sunscreen. Sunscreen. That's also that's also been a running joke. Everyone keeps not saying starscreen. I mean, I used to be a goth long time ago, so I guess sunscreen would be very advantageous. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 um, you got like this Johnny Depp thing going on. You look like you just started. You just look. You look like you just filmed the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. In the tiny little sauna over there. <laughs> well, I actually just had to wash up real quick. I've been like the last four hours in, uh, in the, I had a, a session and booth not very well ventilated. So I was, I was mostly liquid and, uh, and had, to, had to shower. I actually showered for this, guys. Oh, that's nice of you. It's been wow, like three us. months. I have not showered. I wow, showered. you showered and, and Jace over here can't even wear a shirt with sleeves. <laughs> they get in the way. I do. I, I don't even faster. Does, it, I'm faster when I fight. If he wears <laughs> sleeves, he's gonna. The world's gonna end. So there that's why go. we better best not to do, let him do. Well, there were sleeves, but you just got so jacked. They just like they couldn't. Uh, I got stung by a lot of bees. Now the shirt won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. You know, yeah. We. Um. Damn it! I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is uh, what yeah. It's totally your fault. Yeah. Totally your fault. So if you, uh, for the listeners watching, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free. To ask away, we will be here, and uh, you know, once again, like you know, as a, uh, I have to ask you, like, how often do you do podcasts? Um, well, I used to have one sort of. It was a radio Ooh. show that turned into a podcast. Uh, it was back in 2010 it started, and it ran for about seven, seven, eight years. I stopped it just about. I, I moved here in uh, 2017. I'm from New York originally, from, from Queens, New York. If anybody, anybody out there from Queens, New York? Uh, Oceanside. 
You're from Oceanside for real? Yeah, I was born Washington, in Oceanside. What's up? Hey, what's, what's up? <laughs> New York. Are you there right now? No, I'm actually here in Texas. <laughs> uh, right on. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. We can talk about like restaurants and shit later. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, oh man, yeah, I lived in a. I grew up in Flushing, then I lived in Astoria for about 15 years. Uh, so, so you know, you know all about that. Right on. Um, I forgot what we were talking about. Podcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was called The Invisible World, and it was a science and paranormal podcast. Oh, and I'm down. Started Ooh. as a uh, as a radio show. That's why when you pointed out the the, the I want to believe, I'm like. <laughs> this way um but yeah it was cool uh we had like the whole point of it was like i had like someone from nasa on one week and then the next week it'll be the guy who takes alien implants out of people's forearms so it was hey. sort of like a weird balance there uh <laughs> but yeah yeah um outside of that i mean i've done a couple of these things uh as, as a voice actor and as a, as a guest sort of stuff, yeah yeah uh usually not where people can see me uh, oh, I I've apologize. No, no, I've got a face for voice acting. I usually hide in the shadow. <laughs> I am, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, no, nah, I used to do like stage stuff and whatever. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, that was it. The Invisible World. I think they're all still up there somewhere. And, uh, uh, Booty I Warrior's already calling you Science Daddy. Science Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, I'm Is just that... a fan of science. I don't know the actual science. Yeah, that's, that's... me. Oh, well, can you tell what that symbol is supposed to be? No, no. we couldn't really tell. <laughs> it's a, it's well, it's it's sort of like a broken peace sign, but it's a, it's actually an I and a W oh, okay. over each other. Well, we in, and, in, our, in our defense, we couldn't even really see it on our phone. Mostly sorry. a white screen. All we saw was oh, a bright okay, light. I get it now. What, yeah. What's the name of it? I'll look it up and I'll put it in my background. Right, the yeah. invisible world. The invisible world. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really do it anymore. Um, simple, but. Whenever I see bright lights, I think Good, cops I and I start have, making my way yeah. towards the door. Good, then I don't have to worry about <laughs> having to catch up on something because I'm binge listening to a whole bunch of other podcasts. Yeah. And it's like, stop updating. I'm still behind. <laughs> uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Je Goku Didn't Do Anything Illegal Today. Hey, what? first time for everything. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, well, be, um, you oh, somebody's already got a question for you. Since the original hey. voice actor of Starscream voiced Cobra Commander. Also, would you ever voice Cobra Commander if asked? I think you read that wrong. I actually fixed it. If they were, if you were asked to voice uh, Cobra Commander, would you do it? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Very much yes. Holy shit, yes. <laughs> and absolutely, I would. That's like, I very, very much. Cobra Commander is one of my favorite bad guys uh, up there with Skeletor, Darth Vader, and uh, Lopan from Big Trouble Little China, my favorite movie personally. Uh, I would love that. If, if they would have me, I would in a heartbeat. Um, part of how I got into this in the first place was because of Chris Lada and, and that old guard and a couple of people who are huge, you know, idols of mine. Oh. And... Cobra Commander is just the, one of the most fun villains. I, I would. Uh, I think the answer was yes. <laughs> Did I say yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah. Heard I'm, no. One hundred percent. Ninety percent chance yes, with a ten percent chance of yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. It's good go. balance. Good to have balance. Uh, how long have you been voice acting? Oh uh, gosh, it's, it's weird to put a point on it. Like, but for the good part of the past two decades. Uh, New York market's a little weird. Um, and I used to do a lot of like uh, did video games and um, a lot of like industrial stuff. Uh, voice actors oftentimes that pay the rent will do these um, like medical jargon with words that have 16 <laughs> syllables to them and stuff. Uh, so I did a lot of that. Um, oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> add about 15 more. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so um, good part of the past two decades. I hope you haven't done like a commercial where you pop up and you're like, hi, I'm Frank Todero and I'm a transforming robot. And this is world of Warcraft. <laughs> <laughs> like where they had all the celebrities appear and they would kind of say who they were. God, the, the, the Mr. T one was awesome. Do you remember that? I'm a yeah. night, hawk, night, hawk, night elf Mohawk. Yeah. Yeah. And then like Shatner did one too. And they had him in like this weird, like Ruby's costume. He's sitting down. He's <laughs> like, oh, that was awesome. Uh, Dandelion has a question. What is your favorite voice to do? Oh, gosh. Two guesses. Um, well, <laughs> 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 uh, 
Super Jew. Uh, I, I won't say your real name. Uh, well, you know me through the TFCon. I think that's when we first yes. met, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so I've been a Transformers fan since Transformers has transformed into the Transformers that it is from whatever it was before, Diaclone and so forth. And if you can see on the other side of this webcam, there's just shelves and shelves of nonsense. And there's 100 Rubbermaid containers in storage back in New York of the rest of the collection, all the G1 stuff and everything. Uh, so Starscream is, is, is pretty there, pretty there, but it's, it's kind of tied right now. There's a, there's a project that I'm working on now. Uh, it's been announced so I can, I can say it. Do uh, you know Cuphead? The mm -hmm. Cuphead? It's a TV show coming out on Netflix. I get to play Mugman. And I'm very excited uh, about, about Mugman because in my opinion, it's sort of like the closest thing you can get to time travel I get to voice this character that is super inspired by like the old Fleischer cartoons, the old Di the old Disney shorts and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so friggin' cool, like old like Popeye and all, all that stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Betty Boo. And it's got the rubber hose animation. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, every single script that I've read, I've laughed out loud. And I don't usually laugh out loud when when you're reading. You very rarely do you re laugh when you're reading. Um, every single one, and I. And some, somehow meandered through life that I got the privilege to originate a character that is displaced from time from this like 1920s sort of feel. Mm -hmm. And I love it so much. So it's, it's a tie. It, I'd say it was a tie between uh, <clears throat> Starship and Love Man. Is there any voices that you enjoy doing that are not like part of your job, like, like somebody you mimic or anything that you come up with creatively? Like, oh, yes, you know, like. Or Snarf, Snarf, Lion-O, Snarf. Snarf, Lion-O. I, lo I love Snarf, too. I always <laughs> like the kid relation characters, as you can tell by the stuffed Ewok over my shoulder yeah. here. Uh, I like Snarf. Uh, so what do you mean? Just like a, a voice that I like to do? Or? Yeah, just anything in general. I know my girlfriend hates when uh, whenever I... Because uh, whenever we're in public, and of course, like when you're a voice actor, he's like, oh, do a voice. It's kind of like, oh, you're an architect? Design me a building, you know? It's, like, it's weird. But uh, she'll... Uh, <laughs> She'll, she'll, you know, ask me to do something. And I'll always do the worst voice. Like, it's a, the, the worst. Um, oh, well, of course. Oh, 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 oh. And it's super annoying. And that's why I think there's this weird sort of uh, sadistic thread there, which is probably, I, I, I still have a girlfriend, so at least that's good. That's good. Yeah, that works. <laughs> but that that that's that weird kind of that, I guess that's that's my answer. Oh yeah, like my ex, uh the mother of my child, whenever we go out to eat, she'd get mad. I'd always pull out the Mexican voice like, I'm like, "Hello, <laughs> welcome to uh Welcome to generic Japanese ramen restaurant. How can we help you today? Ah, sí, quiero el, la, la ramen que los con tortillas y una cerveza de corona y todo eso en la chingada con frijoles y arroz y me lo puedes traer pronto porque tengo que ir a trabajar porque and she'd be like, stop it. <laughs> well, like she hit me because I'm Mexican. <laughs> I, I did something like that when I was a kid. Uh, so we, we were, I grew up in Queens, had a lot of friends in Long Island. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember this, Sonic, the, the McMansion on uh, Jamaica Avenue, Jericho Turnpike, this big mansion was turned into a McDonald's. Yes, I, uh, I did. A McMansion. Yes. It was like an actual McMansion. It was a McMansion that was turned. It was it was turned a into a McDonald's, <laughs> old Victorian house. Wow. Um, it's a McDonald's. <laughs> so one thing that we would do is uh, this is this is like I guess part of the origin story, right, for voice acting. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd be in high school, a bunch of jerks and driving around, and uh, I had this van. I had a white van. Uh, Did it say free candy on the side? <laughs> Did it have windows? That's the request. Does it have windows? That's so the, not only does this thing have windows, I'm going to oh, get no. very excited to talk about this van. So I was in a bunch of bands back in the day, you know, tricking yourself, thinking you're a rock star. And we would pile all the stuff in the back. And I had this van that was my father's. My father's a contractor. Mm -hmm. He used to have this thing, right? It's a little little thing right now. And the front two seats spun around. They were called captain's chairs, right? So mm -hmm. they could face the back. And oh. between the bench seat and the front two seats was a fucking chess table. Nice. So, and it was a white busted van with rust marks. And I, I had to like have a, this override for the ignition that I pressed a button and switched something. So I had the Millennium Falcon. There was a chess table. I had people that made weird noises sitting next to me. I have, I, uh, is, it, <laughs> is it more of the Millennium Falcon or the vehicle from Spaceballs? 
column A, column B. Oh, yes. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a Winnebago feel to it. But anyway, uh, the story is, so we would do driving around and we would go to, um, to the drive through for at the McDonald's. And every time we would go, pull up to the, the, um, to the, the little speaker. And I would say, <laughs> and the, oh, sorry, sir, sir, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, uh, well, there, there's a, uh, I'm sorry, there's something wrong with the speaker. Just pull around, just pull around. <laughs> pull around, we would open the door and open the door. <laughs> And he said, yes, sir, I'm so sorry about that. And I was like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here, you idiot. And like, so, so we were banned from that, uh, that particular establishment. Um, now, that, your story about the waiter and stuff reminded me of that. So that's well, how I, we got I, I, out of McDonald's. You, you, um, you haven't heard, like, I've, I've done so much horrible shit in my life. <laughs> we should really send, like, a, mom, a memo out before we have guests <laughs> on. It's like. Uh. These are illegal acts. <laughs> Here's everything Goku has done illegally Here's in the last. It's like done. it's like a it's like a book. Damn, is this his whole like his whole life? No, that's within it's the last month. It's called a police report, but <laughs> yeah. he keeps calling it a folder. A legendary. Like, they like, know him by legendary. they know they know him by name in jail. Like, oh hey Jesse, welcome back. Cells clean for you. Oh thanks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even fucking get arrested. I just drive myself to holding. All right, I'm here to turn myself in. What did you do? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I did something, I did something. wrong. So well, I'm for just dinner tonight. Yeah. Check the news tonight. We'll find out. I'm already filling in time in advance. I'm putting in a. I'm investing time. I had start in case I get trialed of something. I'm and I'm committed. I already have time in. Oh, Dang but it. um, you've been um, you've been you said you've been voice acting for um for about roughly two decades. Um, what is one of the things, like, what is the best thing that you have done? Like the thing that you love the most that you can talk about? Uh, what was my favorite thing? Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to beat Starscream when you're such a huge Transformers fan, you know? <laughs> and the fact that I get to do it and gosh, I was in three series already. And then this, this fourth one just dropped. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, it's. That's rough because, again, for me personally, Transformers is uh, such a huge part of my life anyway. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, I have to stick with that. I mean, it's a boring answer because we've talked about Transformers ad nauseum now. But man, <laughs> I, I love I mean, love to get to be Starscream. Uh, um, just a fun character too, you know. We had a we had a couple of questions we didn't get to address. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and address them now. Uh, curiously, would you work with panelists for like a live act live role play thing? Been there, done that. Live role play? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um like like on like sitting at the table and then role playing throughout your characters, like right? Like yeah. like last year's TFCon. You and I were in the same yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. And John. Oh god, like this the script reading? Yeah, god, that was, that that was so great. Fun. And it was like one of these things where um oh gosh. Was that was that last year? No, that was like three years ago. Which one? Um so the, the one in Chicago. I think it was 20. Okay. Yeah. I didn't go to that. Were Last year's one? TFCon was the, my first TFCon. <laughs> right on. Right on. Well, what's, what's so funny? The stupid really? comments. The co I guess I have to, I'm a producer, so I have to, I have to watch the program. I have to watch the studio, the zoom, the, the, the restream chat. And I see all, because we're streaming on YouTube, Facebook uh -huh. and Twitch. And so, like, people like to troll me on the on the comment section. They're like, oh, oh, yeah, they're mimicking me on there. They're like, oh, I like to turn myself in for something I haven't done, but I'm sure I will be. It will be done in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Minority Report shit right there. Jeez. <laughs> uh, one of the uh, questions asked is, what is your favorite JRPG? Oh, um, <laughs> gosh, uh, this is going to be a cop out. But just because it's one of my favorite games of all time is Chrono Trigger. And I know that's hey, yes, <laughs> love me some yes. um, one of my favorite ones. And I think it is possibly one of the most underappreciated RPGs of all time is the legend of Dragoon. Yeah. That sadly doesn't get talked about a lot. Wow. I haven't thought about that. <laughs> that game came out 20 years ago. This I, year. I, in my honest opinion, I think it's much better than final fantasy seven on the PlayStation one. Mm. <laughs> they were going to put dart in the PlayStation all-stars game. But then they cut him. 
the um, main character. They want to know, uh, Mr. Blank would like to know, Frank, have you voiced any characters from anime like Berserk? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Frank, you yeah, voiced a few characters. Okay. Frank, you voiced a few characters from my favorite anime, Berserk. What was it like yeah. working for that project? It's gory as hell, and it's super fun. <laughs> did you, uh, did you uh, before, I, before you, uh, before you, uh, I, 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 I want to ask real quick about Berserk. Did you do the new series, or did you do the movies? It was a series. It was like CGI, so okay. it, it wasn't the movies. It was, um, because I, I got to play a pirate which is pretty damn cool. Uh, I think it was Bonebeard is his name. And he's got like, the, like literally like his teeth are sticking out and stuff. Hey, he's saying he spoke like this and he talked like whatever. I don't know. Uh, oh. Yeah, that was, that was really cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was super fun. Well, because the reason why I ask is there is, there is the original Berserk anime. There are the uh -huh. movies and then there's the new one, which was CGI, which was... The reboot? Or... It's the a reboot rebooted or... series. It wasn't it was well the... received. It wasn't well received, but Berserk is one of those anime mangas that it is so. It's not for the faint of heart, mm -hmm. to yeah. say the least. That's understandable. I, I, that's my era of anime, too. Um, so I used to, like, 80s, 90s is when I was, like, really kind of, like, watching anime. So Dominion Tank Police and Bubblegum Crisis, that was, that was my jam. Uh, and you were, we were talking about Dragon Ball before we started airing. Uh, Let's tell you a story about me so anime wasn't really available in the 80s into the into the early 90s so what we would do is up in the bronx and like off of fordham road there are these really super shady shops and you'd go in there and whatever they were doing in the back so whatever illicit activities they're doing in the back and selling in the back is, is is that but in the front so here's me admitting doing something illegal they would have these vhs cassettes with like photocopied fronts and whatnot. And they were like, it'd be like a wrong looking porky pig with a whole bunch of cartoons on some of them. And then next to those interspliced were anime. Mm -hmm. And that's how I watched Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And then eventually Dragon Ball GT were these like, I think it was anime labs or anime hoopla or whatever it was, <laughs> these fan sub things. Right. So no, my first ex uh, exposure, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I, I was actually gonna say, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I've been doing, I went to one of the cons and I was talking to one of the vendors and they talked about like, oh, you know, you know what it was like for us watching anime <laughs> growing up? We had to buy bootleg VHSs that somebody yeah. subtitled in their basement. And it was so cool because like, oh, cool is a weird word, uh, because the translations were not perfect. And it's the same way, like when I do a dub, you know, that's not what they're saying. You need someone to localize it. And there's a very, it's a big talent involved in like localizing the meaning of something rather than right. translation. So you had people doing that that are fan subbing, but Vegeta cursed like a fucking sailor. It was like, <laughs> it's crazy. Like he would say these horrible, depraved things to Kakarot, right? And like, because as, as the subtitles are, are popping up there, it's, uh, so anyway, so, so that was my exposure to Dragon Ball was this like foul mouth Vegeta and everything. I, uh, uh, I can, um, <laughs> so I've been watching anime. The very first anime I ever saw was Dragon Ball, and I instantly <clears throat> fell in love with it. I did not watch in Dragon Ball. In case you can't tell by his yeah. <laughs> that Okay, cool. you can't see. Actually, let, let me just go ahead and show you. That's all Dragon Ball. God damn all it. of it. Oh, it's dope. All Big of nerd. it is Dragon Ball. <laughs> nerd. At this point, is right there, nerd. All those, those are all DVDs, and that's all just Dragon Ball releases. Hold on, i got to make this larger. Give me a second. Enhance. <laughs> that's cool and hats i have like the manga <laughs> three times the vis bigs the three that's and cool. ones the original i even have some of the comics vhs i have so much dragon ball so at this the, point his house should be like a museum actually when i get this would be apartment. this would be in the dossier we hand out to people's like he has a goku wall <laughs> so that's uh, me with transformers and masters of the universe and star wars and star trek and stuff there's that's so, so you do like, like a cribs so, episode um, <laughs> just like super jew actually Nerd gave cribs. me shit because uh, because I didn't grow up with Transformers, I, I didn't I didn't see Transformers as a child. Took I didn't see Lion. I didn't see Thunder. I saw Thundercats, but I was almost a teenager. Well, and that being said, like I didn't really know Transformers with Transformers until the live action movies came out. I mean, I grew up hmm. with Beast Wars, and then I watched uh, the two thousand one Robots in Disguise series, but I didn't know they were the same. I was just like, some of this sounds familiar. Well, yeah. Like, and that was just all I had until the movies came out and I was talking to other people that watched the movies and they were like, 
No, yeah, this thing started in the eighties. So I was like, there were eighties. What? So well, then I, I, went back I, I knew. I, I knew the. <laughs> so then I went back and watched it. To you guys, jeez. Well, no, I knew. I, I knew about Transformers in the eighties. I knew all. Of, I knew that it was a thing. I just never mm. saw it because growing up, I am Mexican. I am. I grew up in a very Spanish-speaking household, and we spent half of the. If I wasn't in school, then we spent all of our time in Mexico. So I grew up half and half, half here, half in Mexico. So all the shows that I grew up watching were in Spanish or like my mom would watch her soap operas, telenovelas in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So like at seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, it was mom's time to watch TV. So the very first time I watched Dragon Ball Z, it was in Mexico and Goku was just about to become a Super Saiyan. This was like in 96. Dragon Ball had already been like airing in Mexico and like people don't know this, but the Japanese actually have like a really strong relationship with Mexican culture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like we were getting anime like Ra Ranma in Spanish. <laughs> we called it Ranma y Medio, which is Ranma and a half. Uh, Caballeros de Zodiaco, which is Knights of the Zodiac, which was Saint Seiya. Yes. Mm -hmm. Saint uh, we had Sailor Moon. We had uh, uh, Just Sailor Super Campeones. We had Super Campeones, which was Captain Subasa. Hmm. which was a soccer anime we had so many like different animes in mexico and they didn't they didn't censor anything the blood no. the nudity it was all there they even did the theme songs in spanish with all the original lyrics they did That's they cool. did they that did was. everything they it was so authentic in spanish and it's so weird because pick there's one line where pickle is like where they're about to like attack him and he's like mama he screams mommy in spanish you know, and, and also Vegeta, like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh no, uh, I was gonna say also because uh, over and not just in Mexico they didn't uncensor it. Also here when they showed on Telemundo, Telemundo would be uncensored. It would be like pretty much straight from the Mexico like feed. And um, not, the the soccer anime, uh, what's his name again? Captain uh, Subasa. That, that I remember. That was on Telemundo in New York, where we right. were kids. Uh, but you mentioned my first anime there. Like you said, yours was for it was Dragon Ball. Mine was Ranma Half. Ranma and, in Spanish is called Ranma y Medio. Ranma y Medio. Oh, yeah, Such right. a great show. Uh, and like, so, so I watched that. The kids up the block, Scott and Benjamin Tam, wherever you are out in the universe, <laughs> I think they're in Jersey now. Uh, and their mother wanted, because there's, there's a Chinese family, and she wanted them to watch things in Chinese. So I watched a Japanese cartoon subbed in one type of Chinese and dubbed <laughs> in a different. And so I could not understand it like a hundred different ways. And I'm just like sitting there, I'm like, that panda's just hitting that guy on the head with a sign and now her shirt's <laughs> off and now this duck is turning into a guy with a lab coat. This is the best thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> I love Rama Half. So I, when I think it was, was it Viz that put those out? They yeah. had like the, uh, the satin covered. Um, comic I believe book. it was Viz, yeah. Yeah, so I, the, 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 the solid colored ones. Cause I had some of the Japanese ones there's a time in my life where I tricked myself into thinking I can actually learn Japanese. Uh, and then I, uh, and then they came out like in English, but then these were backwards and you had to buy them all over again. Cause I had another correct direction. Then they had individual issues that were like American comic sized uh, the craziness. I had way too many of those things. So uh, yeah, those are sadly in storage, all that stuff back home. But like, yeah, I remember we would go um, down to like Mitsuwa and get the little keychains and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the little like, I don't know. It was like there wasn't a lot of like product to run my hands in the uh, middle of the US. Just a, just a fun fact for a lot of people watching. Um, well, I talked when we met with Christopher Savage. He admitted that when uh, they got when they finally got the rights to dub certain anime like Dragon Ball Z and certain other ones, Japan refused to send over the footage for the anime. So hmm. they actually had to get the anime footage from Mexico. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> So that is really cool. Uh, in, in in Mexico too, like they cuss too, like they don't they don't censor shit. Like there's a scene where Vegeta, there's several scenes where Vegeta will refer to Goku, Kakaroto, no seas idiota, or no seas pendejo. You know, don't be a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and but, that's and that's how they were subtitled in those knockoff ones that I had as a kid, those VHS. Like it was like, what? These are cartoons, and they're cursing at each other, and. But they're enemies, and now they're like, "Hey, good job, dude! This is group. This is nuts." So, so yeah. I mean, yeah, but it's also Mexico where you have half-naked women <laughs> dancing around on a game show. That's so, but oh, he got it. Oh my God! What was that? <laughs> a la cama con porcel? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. 
there's this like talk show there's the, the host would just do this and then these women it's like now it's time for women in metal bikinis and like a whole bunch of like princess leia's with feathers coming out of their you know? i think yeah i think i remember it <laughs> briefly but um <laughs> mexico's always been like uh this country where we're very over the top but at the same time we're also very progressive like yeah not just el salvador not just uh mexico also pretty much like any country central america mm-hmm. like el salvador would be that too they would get over the top as well with it yeah uh sometimes they have like they have their version of cartoon network and instead of adult swim they just show it like as a regular part like they would show naruto they would show at some point they would show south park like at noon a, a cartoon <laughs> a, a show that we did have Good we didn't have show. transformers but we had beast machines and beast wars mm-hmm. <laughs> dubbed in spanish that's crazy so no transformers but like the old mainframe stuff that's cool <laughs> i only remember one transformer name in spanish it was rat trap rata trampa <laughs> maximo <laughs> poder you know in, he's in, my favorite he's, they would say maximize in the english dub yeah but in in spanish they would say maximo poder which is maximum power okay that almost makes more sense <laughs> rather well, than just like saying their name as the unlock code. But <laughs> well, because anime has become such a cultural part of Mexico when Dragon Ball Super was airing, <laughs> the uh, Japanese government threatened to like shut off any kind of stream in Mexico and the Mexican government's like, do it. We're still going to pirate it. <laughs> so they had to come to a deal to where they could air it in front of 10,000 people in Mexico City in, ta- in the in the center of town hall. Yeah, there's videos. There's an entire that was, like that was for the the tournament arc that happened. In Super yeah, Mario. it was they, pretty much like the last. There few are ten thousand people episode. watching Dragon Ball Super on a projector, cheering and acting like it's a sporting <laughs> event. Uh, anyone that goes to Mexico, I would not go to Mexico during a soccer sporting event. It can be very dangerous. Not you can wise, have happy yeah. riots if the team wins, and you can have angry riots if the, the team, team loses. Okay, What's the difference? What's the difference? Riot, riots pretty much insured. Right, right. right. The, what's the difference? What's the difference? The angry riots involve setting shit on fire. <laughs> the happy riots is just a couple decap- uh, decapitations or people losing the their toilet hands paper or... all around. You know, yeah, details. You know. that, that escalated kind of quickly. One was just setting something on fire. That one was murder. murder. You gotta understand, what like the hell? Mexican, murder. You gotta understand, so like, murder. like I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about my own people here, but Mexicans, like, whenever we're sober, we're like. Get, get it. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But as soon as we start drinking, Sasuke, guy, I love you. <laughs> I love you. That's why I'm here because I love you. Don't leave me. <laughs> and that's how I'm about to cut off your head because I love you. That's we won. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you talked about Ranma. Ranma is one of the. Pro- it's probably one of my favorite animes of all time. It's so great. And, they, you know, they're like, it's actually a perfect segue because a lot of the guys who uh, voiced Naranma were in Beast Wars. Uh, particular uh, David Kay was a Sontendo, and he went on to be Megatron and Megatron and Megatron and Optimus Prime. <laughs> and, uh, yes. uh, and, and also, like, one of the like nicest, kindest human beings he that is. you could ever hope to meet. And, like, gosh, I, I got to. So. Transformers fan, I've been going to these BotCon conventions, these Transformers conventions for a long time. And I Wait, got how have I not met you at BotCon? I, that's why I'm, I'm pretty sure that we must have met through them. I've been going to them since 1999, I believe. Uh, okay, yeah, I went to, I've been going to them since 2009. How have I not actually So then you were your... at the 2001 at uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. No, not 2000. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, you said 2000. 2009. 2009. 2009. 2009. I'm old. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it, like I said, it took me a while to discover this. And then I didn't. Yeah. So after the movies came out, I didn't even know about BotCon until 2008. And I couldn't go to the 2008 one. So I waited till t- 2009. Had I known about this show properly. Yeah, I would have tried to have gone since 1999. I missed out. Uh, I'll be right back. Did you go to the last? 2016? Oh, yeah. And I almost died. Yeah, that was uh, that week. That was the one in Kentucky, right? Yes. And yeah, I was had... the host of that. That's why the guy on stage I was interviewing all the people. That was me. <laughs> How was, did you uh, not generation. recognize him? I, I just well, I didn't know about you at the time. I guess I just kind of was like, "Who's this guy? Why is he going to be out there?" And I, I was like, just focused on like uh, Venus, Tur- uh, Venus Turzo, Scott McNeil, David. Yeah, yeah David K. They were all there because they were all the Predacons, and I was so annoyed that like um. What's his name? Uh, 
crud, I forgot his actor's name. Tarantulas. He was supposed to be there, but he canceled. Oh, yeah. I'm like, Adam damn Harvard. it. But Greg yeah, Berger was there. Judd Nelson was there. Yeah. It was, and, uh, it was great. So yeah. I actually have a, a, a quick story about the Judd Nelson yeah. thing. Um, so I was that weird guy dressed yes. in black on stage. Yes, so, I remember now. <laughs> and earlier in that convention, he took, uh, someone gave him, I guess, the hat off of their head. It was this Autobot hat. Uh-huh. Uh, any, uh, whatever, little knit hat. And he wore it for like the rest of the convention, right? I remember uh, that. Yeah. And he wore it on stage. And like the interview was was really cool. He's like a really yeah. a dope dude, like very down to earth. He was very nice. Stuff, right. So and one of the questions because the way I don't know if you guys pardon me for just like rambling on talking shop. Or Go for it. No, uh, you're fine. But this is why you're here. <laughs> they, don't want, they hear this, us talk all the time. They they, yeah, they hear me talk about being a Mexican all the time. Talking about doing <laughs> illegal shit, being illegal. I finally get to talk about Transformer stuff. All I, all I hear every day is Dragon Ball this, Dragon Ball this. Like, can I talk no, about No, we stuff? do not. We talk <laughs> about illegal this, illegal that. Goku's not in Again, jail. Again, nothing we, I can contribute. We tell her if she wants to talk about Transformers, she has to bring on a voice actor from Transformers. Sad. Oh, well, you did it. <laughs> 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 so he, um, so what, the way that they did the the panels there mm-hmm. uh, is they would instead of have people come up and ask questions, they would write them down on index cards, mm-hmm. and then we would collect the index cards, pick the ones that are you know because otherwise you have like ten people like what would it sound like your character ordering fast food, which I personally love because I think that's a fun I love question. that one. That's a great one. Uh, you'd have that a thousand times other one. Uh, so <laughs> one of the questions was, would you ever play Hot Rod or Rodimus again, and now he did already technically an animated. It was like a quick thing. Uh, it was a very quick thing. Which uh, which is a great show. If you, anybody hasn't seen that, Transformers animated. Beautiful. It was pretty good. Um, uh, so he's like, yeah, of course. Now, I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but for C- for the second part of the Prime Wars trilogy, mm-hmm. Titans Return, they got him to reprise G1 Rodimus, who yes. turned into Hot Rod again. Yes. And let me tell you, dude shows up on a motorcycle in a wool trench coat and he has the hat with him and he He's brought so- it because they were doing some behind the scenes stuff with us asteroids are like interviewing us to be like what does transformers mean to you right and like this dude was gushing it was like i was almost in tears how just like gratefully was I, a lot of that got cut, uh, left on the floor uh cutting room floor sadly but like he saved the hat from botcon 2016 Aww showed up to rehearsals with it and also he's kind of like just as cool as like an like a grown up bender would be you know from breakfast club because he's showing up in like the trench coat and the motorcycle and stuff and he seems I was like oh hey frank i'm like you remember my name you're you're, you're that guy <laughs> right? from my childhood this is real cool so like that was really it was just sort of kind of a neat little thing how that convention i guess had an impact on him because mm-hmm. like he said on stage he didn't know that there was this like huge fan base i'm sorry i'm like yeah. boring you guys talking about no no no, it's no, good. no no it's great you gotta remember i'm a producer i'm watching i'm getting messages so like let me fill you in on some backstory i had Hi. posted on facebook i don't know if you've heard of has been hotel yes oh my buddy jason's doing something with that i think right oh shit oh, never don't. mind <laughs> never mind let me let shut up now trash talk it for the next 10 wait, wait, seconds jason. i don't know what it is Jason, uh, I can't ever say his last name either. I have well, maybe maybe I'm getting confused. Uh, I, might be, what... I might be getting the name confused with something else. There was something that he was doing. Okay. That well, was, uh... I you're posted talking the same on Jason my that Facebook. was with us on the panel, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, okay. the voice of Megatron. He 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 and I he was became good. quick friends, and we drink well. Before the apocalypse, would drink scotch every Friday. That seems again, to be the so. case with every okay, voice right. actor. Hey, I do the voice of so and so. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, I love you, I love you." And then as soon as they leave, I hate Dove and me or Dove shows. I need to keep the original language. Shows how fickle they are. But fickle. as soon as like the pinos over, the some of the voice actors are like, "I need a drink." Yeah, I'm like, like "Hey, finish your story, guys." Like, have Sorry. a good day. No, no, no. So I had posted before you had joined. Uh, Has been hotel sucks on Facebook. <laughs> And now and there are people and it fighting. Triggered a lot of people. <laughs> and it triggered a lot of people. It not only triggered people to be like, you know what, Goku, your opinion is stupid. And then here comes other people. It's his opinion. You leave him alone. And people are like now fighting and messaging War. me. The internet. The internet. Uh, right. It's a it's a web comic or it's a it's a it, it, it it's was an a web it was a web show. That that's now like a full length show because it had a pilot episode. Mm-hmm. I just never I never saw the appeal. But as soon as I post my opinion, people are like, arr, arr, how dare you have an opinion? And I'm like, uh, 
They're like, well, no, I don't like it. Rawr, screw your opinion. Well, I'm Mexican. Oh, shit. Never mind. Sorry. Sorry. Mexican. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> I'm a person of color. Well, shit. Fuck. Never mind. You, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, yeah. Uh, gringo. gringo. I, I usually stay away from comments and things like that, personally. Well, no. Uh, like, uh, sometimes, like, I honestly don't like it, but I'll post something like, hey, generic status that you finds you offensive and somebody i had posted that it, it, it was ge- it was actually <clears throat> generic status that offends you and someone actually got offended by that <laughs> they're like you're a piece of shit i'm like are well, they, I mean, sure they weren't like i wasn't wrong, wrong or something oh well, no they, I, was, I was like you know i'm like you're gonna have to try harder i i live in a mexican household you know i got a mug that says that and they're just like they're like they're like the Pikachu. I mean, they're like, <laughs> um, what is okay? So you have you uh, actually you're as a voice actor. I'm here a lot of stories about voice actors. Whenever they do voices, they kind of work alone. Have is there anyone that you've actually gotten do, the chance to work with in person where you kind of felt like <laughs> starstruck? Stop laughing at the comments. Why are you laughing? Go. <laughs> pachinko since this is a uh, transformer podcast as a top fan i dubbed super jew to jew former laughing my ass off transformer and super jew doing the fusion dance laughing my ass off dragon ball z reference optimus prime is jewish he is yeah and they like made from, a reference uh, to that in family called? guy uh, family guy with that thing yeah. <laughs> <It's laughs> <Prime laughs> hey i didn't know <laughs> <I> was <laughs> fine with jewish that was so much fun uh and there's half of lenny crowder it's weird uh <laughs> I'm um, sorry. Uh, you were asking Schnarf, me a question. Schnarf, has, <laughs> Schnarf, is there anyone you felt starstruck working with Schnarf? I mean, constantly. I mean, the, the, but the, the problem there is that a, more often than not, we've been doing uh, not group sessions. So it's not like necessarily in the booth. Um, like we're not really standing next to each other if, if that was part of the question. Um, but like, I mean, see, this is the thing, like, there's never like that moment where it's like, oh no, you've made it. You've never this. We're all kind of in the trenches together. And when you meet these guys that have been doing this for 50 years, they're just the nicest people in the world. And they're just like, oh, we're all just going for all the same stuff and stuff. But then there's me, who's also like this drooling fanboy. That's like, oh, <laughs> oh you're. Oh. And, and um, it's insane. Um, Greg Berger, for one, right? Greg Berger. Oh, yes. uh, Love him. He, yeah, and and he got he was in that last uh last of the prime wars as grimlock and i got to be i played sludge next to him so he was like my commander and stuff oh my right God. uh i have words about that trilogy you finish yours but i have words oh, later yeah, about that no. <laughs> uh but i mean just talking to talk about things coming full circle one of my earliest spot cons and i got to say this to him backstage during the convention mm-hmm. that, we, that we were talking about before um early early way on like when i had just like made my own demo with my little like total punk drawing a picture of all these voices and stuff right and i showed up wet behind the ears uh and i and this was like it has to have been like early early 2000s i don't remember the exact year and he was there and there was an opportunity to talk to him I'm like oh mr burger can i give you my demo <laughs> and he turns to me and it's like not unless i can give you mine Stopped what he was doing, left the floor, went up to his room, got uh, he, like he and his wife, I guess, went up there and got and got the CD, came back down, found me and gave it to me. And I have that to this day because That's here I awesome. am, some young punk like who loves Transformers and wants to be a Transformer one day. And then <laughs> fast forward, I get to be and it's in the same show as this guy. And like, I, I, I'm going to get I get emotional when I think about these things, because mm-hmm. like here I am, like. Peter Cullen, when he says Starscream in that show, he's talking about me. So, so like for me, like a lot of the uh, the guys that were my inspiration, um, and then like, oh gosh, I don't know if you were there for the second to last BotCon. Uh, and this is oh, before 2015. I was cast. Oh, 2015 when uh, like everyone almost got pneumonia. No, I missed that one. <laughs> oh no, yes, yeah. this is Chicago. Yeah, that was a little, that, that hotel was weird. Um, but Frank Jeez. Welter was there. And Frank yeah, I know. Ugh, like that is that is like. I didn't get to see him then, but uh, I saw him and Peter Collin a few months later when they came to San Antonio for uh, Texas Comic Con. And I just like melted all over the floor and I was so pissed off. So here's what happened. So like super quick. So I had found a New York Comic Con 
the porcelain hard hero bust of Megatron mm. and his arm was broken and they were like, the arm was broken. So I can give it to you for 20 bucks. I was like, done. I can get this fixed. So we got it fixed. My dad and I, and we took it to him and we were like, please sign. And he was just like, what is this? And all this cool stuff. Well, I didn't have an optimist and I was so pissed. So I was running around the dealer's room all weekend looking for a thing. I finally found it. And the dealer was selling it with a Megatron for like a hundred bucks. And I'm like, I just want the Optimus. And he's like, I don't want to break up the sales. Like, don't do this to me. I want the fucking Optimus. And I pay like way too much for it, but he finally broke it up. But I had just missed um, the guy taking Peter Cullen and Frank Welker to the airport. And I just about like lost myself at the whole end of the thing. And so I'm just sitting in the corner of like the convention or whatever. And my dad had walked away and David K came up cause he was there too. And like you said, he's the nicest human being. I mean, yeah. we saw each other all weekend and he was like, Hey, Rachel, are you okay? And I was like, Oh, you don't want to know what's going on. It's just some fan stuff. He's like, no, Tony, you look like you've been like up. What's wrong? And I was like, da, 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 da. and I get to miss, and I have this thing and I wanted Peter Collins to sign. It's like, you'll see him again. I was like, you are correct, sir. And that was just like really cool. Like these guys are just really down to earth and they're just, yeah. they are the sweetest. Yeah. And, and Frank was the same way. Yeah. Uh, that last convention, that was his first ever like convention yeah. where he was on stage. Uh, and just like the sweetest dude. Like, mm -hmm. like they were hilarious. People. They were just back and forth. Yeah. They, uh, he and Peter Collin were in a panel and I was just like, oh my yeah. God, they're real. <laughs> And like, gosh, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm always like, I'm, I'm very kind of hesitant to like bug people and like whatever. But he, he was totally like, yeah, let's take a picture together. And like, mm -hmm, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. it, was really, it was really nice. Oh, well, y'all are but the yeah, complete I mean, opposite like, of me. What's that? Well, like, y'all are the complete opposite of me. Whenever, whenever it's a convention and there's a Dragon Ball Z voice actor, that like, oh. I bring like, like a oh, wheel, sure. like I bring, I bring a, wa a wagon full of shit. Hey, yeah. what's up? Well, especially when I met Vic, I used to troll him. Yeah. What's up? He's like, Hey, w welcome. Do you want an order? Yeah. I bring up all this <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Broly shit. Oh, wow. You're, you're a fan of my work. Have you seen any other, oh have you seen any other, other of my work? I'm like, no, start signing. <laughs> I always feel bad. Like when I'm at a table and someone comes over and like, cause like, it's not up to me. It's up to like whoever mm -hmm. brought me there. Right. So uh -huh. they're like, Oh, well, I don't want one of your pictures, but can you sign it? It's like, <laughs> it's like everything they've collected in the last hundred years. <laughs> uh, and like me on the street, like as a human, you just want to, you want to do that for a kid that walks up to mm -hmm. you. Then you've got like someone over here. That's like, you can't do that because you know, this is a, this goes to that charity and this goes to that charity. So my, my workaround for that is I made this like, really dumb drawing of Starscream, but like a paper cut, a paper like mm -hmm. cutout mm -hmm. puppet doll thing. <laughs> so you can like dress them up and put a, so it's just like, <laughs> like a, like a coloring sheet. So like if someone comes up and they're like, like, Oh, we don't have money and it was whatever. And so I always like sneak them like a little something, you know, uh, if I have them with me, uh, it just always feels so weird, you know, especially yeah. when, when, um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird signing autographs. Uh, I can honestly tell you that, the first autograph I signed, it was really, really weird. And I was like, huh, really? <laughs> Why? I think that was me. No, no, no. I actually signed, I've signed a few autographs because people are like, oh my God, you're the, you're the Mexican guy from the con and you hosted <laughs> you're all the, the panels. You're the Mexican guy from the con? <laughs> <laughs> because I walk, Very Mexican I walk around most of the comic cons and anime cons that I can go to in a poncho and sombrero going Mexican and I will guy. walk okay. around the that con. makes sense. I will walk around the con <laughs> and I will be like sense. in the top of my lungs. <laughs> and I will be blasting <laughs> Selena on a speaker. And people like I've gotten so much. I've gotten shit a couple times for blasting. This is America. Yeah, I know. North America. Right. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've almost been deported, by the way. <laughs> That's a great story. Oh my gosh, the sun is a deadly laser right now. I was I was wondering when that light was going to make its way to your face. <laughs> do the whole thing like this. All right. There you go. Oh, yeah. so, red like, heart action. Yeah. I've signed a couple autographs, but What's the, happening, the strangest <laughs> autograph I've ever signed 
we were at a convention in Dallas. It's a very small con. It's called All Con. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. I'm just going to go close us. There uh, you go. Uh, Frank Tadaro needs to go take a pee pee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he needs to go pee. What's doing it right here? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this. Oh bucket, well, since we're like since it's almost else. eight o'clock anyway, we might as well do it. Uh, yeah. A shameless advertising segue. <laughs> this podcast <laughs> is brought to you by NoNameNerd.com. If you use the Geeks Five Ever coupon code at checkout, you get ten percent off all of your purchases. Also, this podcast is brought to you by Dos Equis. Remember. <laughs> Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> it's actually they actually not. give you some Dos Equis. No. That, it's actually no. not a sponsor, but our sponsors are uh, Under Subsidence. You can check them out at undersubsidence.com or youtube.com slash undersubsidence and nonamenerd.com. Remember, with no name nerd, use the coupon code GEEKS5EVER and get 10% off all your purchases site-wide. Throughout the site, doesn't matter how many you do, not just the first one, 10% off. I like saving money, especially right now that we're all stuck at home, right? And remember, know, right? who doesn't want to save money? Also, when stuck at home and having nothing to do in your life just kind of sucks, watch the Geeks Five Ever podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyways, uh, to with my story. Um, so we were at AllCon, and my friend's like, you know what would be funny if I told the whole con you were Maui from Moana? I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Is don't do that do it, please it's already bad enough that the people from hawaii actually think i'm samoan let's not add to it <laughs> and so like the whole con by saturday was calling me Ma Ma maui there was this little five-year-old in a he he was a little boy he was wearing an elsa dress because he really loved elsa he's like maui i'm like oh son of a bitch <laughs> <laughs> did you play I'm, it up for him huh did oh, you like no. play it up for him i did i was like, like hey i was like hey you're welcome <laughs> nice. <laughs> so like they had karaoke and That's I said you're welcome. So this one girl's like, Oh my god, you're Maui. You're <laughs> Maui. Can you like can I have your autograph? Oh and I'm like so drunk, I'm like, only if I can sign your boobs. <laughs> Oof. This chick opened up her shirt and I'm like and I'm trying to scribble um you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Maui. Nowadays, and I didn't even just... write my friend's like, bro, you owe her an apology. Why? Because you didn't, like, you think you wrote you're welcome in Maui, but you drew tic-tac-toe on her chest. I love that that's why you have to apologize. <laughs> that's the reason. Because it was consensual. <laughs> it was consensual. I was probably drunker than she was. Very different than my uh, convention experience. See, guys, y'all thought I was running out of stories. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we heard We've that heard story, this story before. before. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I got something that you signed, Goku. Really? This is my dual disc. It the says, duel's over, Yugi boy. The great Saiyan man in this shitty cursive. <laughs> How drunk yeah, was I? This is at Yulcon, too. This is the second drunk Yulcon. Drunk enough, apparently. Look at that. I, think, I can't uh, fucking read that I'm shit. I'm going to stop Goku. drinking at cons. Goku, for now on, and for when, before you autograph I'm probably married. I probably signed a marriage certificate. Mexican. <laughs> Jesse, go. I think I signed this, and it's mine. I don't know. Have you ever watched uh, Have you ever watched Power Rangers? Yes. Yes. What Not you is our Power guest. Ranger? Because I've shared the story with y'all. Oh. Uh, you talking to me? Yes, Mr. Frank uh, Tortuga. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm a turtle now. Great. Uh, hey. uh, I've I've watched a bit of a uh, Mighty Morphin. Not much. Do you, do you? Okay, I was about to ask you if you haven't. Do you know any of the original cast members? Um. I know one, uh, Jason David Frank. Of course. Uh, because he was in Transformers, but before that. Really? Uh, a good no, two yeah. years before that. Yeah, he was in the... He's in the trilogy Hyper I was telling you all about. Still have to have words uh, about that. <laughs> yes. Um, that was so weird. <laughs> what was weird about it? That was just like a left field choice, I feel. Like, of oh, yeah. all the people to get, I was like, really? 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 Yeah. He's he's a tiny little guy that goes inside a big <laughs> robot, so it kind of makes its own Wait, I mean, <laughs> more time. I need an adult. <laughs> uh, I, I, I met him uh, a while yeah. back. I uh, there's a, a time when I used to work with this company that like I was basically like his bodyguard at comic conventions mm. uh, for for this this company. Uh, which is weird because I'm five foot six and he is a ninja. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But so so that's that's weird. 
Um, uh, I was were you really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Uh, to go through you to get to the boss level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. uh, exactly. Do you know uh, take much. the Black Ranger? His name was Walter Jones. Zach. His, he was. He played Zach. He played okay. the Black Ranger. He played the original Black Ranger. He's the black. one that was like, "I'm a frog." No, no, no. no. That's he, Adam. He's no, the that's he's Adam. the black guy that played the Black Ranger. <laughs> He was the okay. one with the hip hop keto. The original black. Oh, well, actually, funny oh, no, story. Was, uh, I've, I've, I've gotten drunk with both of them. Right on. <laughs> so the first time I I, I met Walter, but the, like the I met him at Alcon and we were drinking. I'm like, hey man, what's up? You're powering. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, man? He's like, go away, because he was like, this is him. Here's a really hot girl with a lot of personality, and he's just like. <laughs> I like staring you, right at her chest while drinking and she's flirting with him too <laughs> so i go there to talk to him i didn't i kind of cock blocked him a little sorry if you ever see this but he's with somebody now so i probably did it for the best yeah Good Absolutely. Win. Good so job. like i don't remember the whole conversation but we're drinking we're taking a shot like yeah man i fucking love you <laughs> like oh man yeah dude i wish i was power rangers i could have been the brown ranger burrito power. <laughs> and he's all like dude that's fucking awesome <laughs> he's like i was the only black guy and i was the black ranger and yeah, then i, I met a... i met johnny and i've gotten drunk with johnny and i've had to babysit johnny so that was fun that's adam yeah johnny young bosch that's, that's the played adam. he played the frog um he got yeah, drunk yeah. and he was hung over the next day he had to host a panel and jason david frank <laughs> showed up and jason's very high energy like hey uh, it's morphin time come on everybody hype 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 uh, and johnny's like fuck <laughs> one of the funniest things uh there was this convention that, that i was helping them at uh whatever i was working with a company um salt lake city sorry my mm. brain the sort of little, little things spin with hamsters on them sometimes they remember <laughs> things uh and like jason david frank's fans are awesome Crazy. and boisterous like they are like yeah yeah right so and he got up and like had and and he's totally like cool to the fans and like is hyping mm -hmm. them up and stuff John Barrowman was down the road. Do you know who he is? Yeah. yeah. All right. Captain Jack, Doctor Who, Torchwood. Yeah. Malcolm Merlin. Freaking Malcolm. awesome dude. Really, really nice guy. He, he, him, very, very nice people. But, like, mm -hmm. he is, like, on in a second, you know? Mm -hmm. like, so this noise is happening from Jason Dave from JDF's table. And he's like, oh, yeah? So they're doing this, like, playful thing that people do at conventions. I do it, too. They'll have, like, little competitions or whatever, right? Little fun things, right? But he gets up, uh, Captain Jack gets up on the table and starts, like, <clears throat> dancing. And then, like, Jason and Frank gets up and he's like, yeah! And they're like, yeah! And John Barrowman starts doing one of those... <laughs> he was, he was and, like, probably shaking a, you know, shaking his stuff. And like it's freaking hilarious. And you see Jason Frick like, all right, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, uh, was, it was just it was just everyone was having fun. It was, it was just this one yeah. moment I remember of like the entire floor was just screaming because it was like, yeah, yeah. You uh just to backtrack a little bit, and we're gonna address yeah. some comments after this. Um you we had mentioned you had mentioned that you you've seen Dragon Ball and you were a bit of a Dragon Ball fan. The one, the one group of people I did not expect to be Dragon Ball fans that I happened to meet, and they've heard the story, is when I had met and didn't realize I had, it was them, was Alice in Chains. Oh, right on. Cool. They were doing a secret concert at a bar, and I went dressed up as Goku. I had the hair. It was my own natural hair all spiked up. And I just uh, show up, dope. and they're like, dude, it's Goku. Come drink with us. And we're taking shots. We're drinking beers. And they're like, oh, man, we got to go do a show real quick. Like, we'll be back. We'll be back in half an hour. Fuck it. <laughs> and, I, and then here comes the, the, the host of the whole event. And he's like, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, performing live for the first time at Numbers Nightclub. Alice in Chains. That I'm like, sick. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Are they a cover band? No, it was actually them. The actual Alice in Chains. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I didn't realize it was them. I'm like, holy fuck, they're buying me drinks. Because the guy's like, dude, I fucking love Goku. <laughs> I didn't realize it was them. I'm so stupid. I used... Opened a jar of flies there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? No, I've never heard that, actually. If you had said it, maybe if you had said it in Spanish. 
<laughs> Espanol. Eso lo ayuda Cuanta, uh, ¿Cuánto tacos para tu culo? <laughs> so someone asked a question like an hour ago. Oh, what's up? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's why we're going to address some comments. So, uh, yeah. Booty Warrior says, if your life was a fiction book, what would you, one thing you would change in current life for a good ending to chapter of life 2020? Wait, what? What? I know, right? It was fuck. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I if think the best way you're book... trying to if if you wrote a book of no, like, if your life book... was a book, if your life was a no, fictional book. book, how would you end 2020? Well, the chapter of 2020. 2020. Um, yeah. Dan, wait, wait, wait. Does that mean that he's gonna die at the end of the year? No, no. no. Like, how, no. How does he finish the chapter of <laughs> like? How would you change this chapter to have a good so, ending? Because it says. So, I mean, ending. I, I don't know how old you guys are. Does anybody remember the the show New Heart? Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Wait, so wait, I, would, wait. I would end it exactly the way that Newhart ended. Okay. How did Newhart end? Because I didn't see <laughs> Bob Newhart wakes up next to his wife from the Newhart show, uh, mm-hmm. another TV show, and it was all a dream. And that's how 2020. Oh, would they did end. the same uh, thing with Breaking Bad when What's His Face wakes up with his wife from Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, uh, yeah. So Ryan Crest, Walter White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either that or it would be, uh, what is it, Tommy Westfall from St. Elsewhere, who's like looking into the snow globe the whole time. It's <laughs> better than <laughs> Captain Tsubasa Super Campeones in Mexico. The, the original <laughs> ending was supposed to be after they won the World Cup, he woke up from a coma in the hospital and both his legs were gone. That is dark. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. That yeah. escalated that's quickly. Cool. That was the original ending for the anime, and they were going to air it in Mexico, but they never did. Wow. Wow. I did not know that. No, I mean, yeah, I, I would definitely do the either, like, the, the Dallas, Newhart, wake up from the dream thing, uh, for sure. Uh, 2020 has been crazy. 2020 has, uh, it's been a weird year. Are you guys all right? Like, yeah. No, any, no. Just, we're... Get uh, out of this unscathed. Or... I've been trying to I go home. Job, finally. I've been trying to go back to Mexico, but they That's won't awesome. let us leave. Yeah. Yeah, because oh, wait, they won't. Uh, so they so Mexico is closed off from the U.S. The borders yes. are closed. Yeah, so finally Canada. worked. So is that on our side or on our like they won't everyone Mexico, else? They, they, like, they're really Everybody strict. Else. It's both ways because they're really strict about. You got to understand, like, because we we listen to a lot of news from outside the country, mm-hmm. and um, like the country right now is kind of the laughing stock of the world. Yeah. Like Europe put a band on, we put a band on. Let me, everyone, let me, this is for the listeners. This is for the listeners. Uh, the rest of the world sees us as Jersey Shore. Shit. It was like shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, by the way, some other comments are Booty Warrior says beautiful story. By the way, Super Jew. From the. Te- yes. Uh, yeah. Did sunscreen leave? He's back. Never mind. LOL. <laughs> he had to go take a star scream. Stream. Stream. Star yeah, stream. they were talking about when you had to go, <laughs> when you stepped out of the camera. When you disappeared. Burp. <clears throat> burp. Yeah. Burp. <laughs> <laughs> then you actually do it. No, but, um, like, you've, you've, so let's talk a little bit about the, the, the show Cuphead. Or as much as did, you can talk go. about it. So what was it like? Like, did you play the video game before or is this something that you discovered as you got the role? I, so gosh, what was it? 2017, it was announced. It was announced a while back. And I remember just being obsessed with the images from Mm -hmm. Um, the actual role had nothing to do with that. That was something I got from my agents. Uh, My wonderful agent, Kathy, it's ESD. Uh, she, so I got the audition. I did the audition process and and uh, and got cast. In it. And uh, I remember the for my callback, um, they had us sing a little something too. And something that I like to do is sing in character. Hey. Uh, so um, uh, just to completely go off the rails, after we finished uh, the first season of Transformers, a couple of us went out to karaoke. And Starscream singing Creep by Radiohead might have popped out there somewhere. With, uh, <laughs> it Videos or it didn't happen. When you think about the lyrics, you know? Videos or it didn't happen. I'm a winner. What's that? Videos or it didn't happen. Well, there's no video, sadly. I mean, it was a million years ago. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I got you. I got you, Mr. I got you, Mr. Uh, uh, Tostinos. <laughs> I feel like you have a list of different ones and you're just kind of slowly no, highlighting them. Like, I, I've right. done stand-up. No, 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 no. I have like I, multiple I, personality disorder by the end of this. No, I, 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 I've done stand-up comedy. That's I always come up with 
my material on the fly. Like I, I, I always, I, I don't like scripts. I hate scripts. I like the more natural, like flow of the show. Like you have to be quick. You have to be like, it's a lot of work to like constantly come up with like, uh, like if somebody insults you, you, you insult them back. It's really, mm-hmm. it's actually not as easy as people think. It takes years and years of practice, but once you get it down, it's like, like, Oh my God, you're Mexican. So what? And you're like 10, go away. <laughs> It's the same thing with, um, and this is another thing for uh, for voice acting. Whenever someone asks me, like, mm-hmm. how are you get in voice acting and such, uh, improv. Improv mm-hmm. is more beneficial than anything. I mean, of course, there's the old, uh, you know, it's, uh, big A, little V, acting comes first. But being able to think on your feet is like, uh, it's, it's required, um, especially when you're doing some sort of like loop group ADR and stuff. Uh, you're making stuff up on the fly. Usually, what's written on the. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Or, oh, yeah, I, just like, no, yeah, no, no. I, uh, noises. All of my uh, crowd. All angry. of my panels. Um, every single one of my panel is improv. Uh, there is one panel that we host. Um, it's called the Super Cosplay Dating Game Show. That's now, funny. in that one, what we do is we Ow. encourage the audience. It's, it's one of those typical, for those of you that don't know what the cosplay dating game show is, it's one of those old dating games where you have like a, a guy or girl, bachelor or bachelorette, ask questions to a bunch of random people. But instead, I look, 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 they're not really going to date. Okay. They're going to go up here. They're going to tell jokes. They're going to be funny. As the audience, I want you to boo the shit out of them if they're not funny. And they'll <laughs> they'll hassle me. They'll, I had one person like start hassling me. Like, hey. Like, get good. Like, this shit sucks. I'm like, hey, 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 you there in the cheap seats. Keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so I will, I will, like, there was a 10-year-old that trolled my Dragon Ball Z panel. And me and the 10-year-old were going back and forth. I'm like, I'm sorry. When did daycare le- let out early? I'm like, oh, man, I would tell your mom to come pick you up, but I'm pretty sure you don't know who your parents are. What, adopted? So we were going what? back and forth, and they were making yeah. illegal jokes. I was making jokes at them. We had like 20 people approach me like, holy shit, dude, was that like part of the show? I'm like, no, I just, I don't even know who that was. Just hate that guy. No, it was a (laughs) 10-year-old. I hate that 10-year-old. Like that 10-year-old was, we were going back and forth without skipping a beat. So the kid's got it, he's got it. It doesn't matter if he's 10 years old. Oh no, the kid has a lot of potential when it comes to it. that wit. But when it comes to improv, when it comes to stand-up comedy, I've gone on stage and choked. I've been on stage in front of 500 people. I've been on stage in front of no people, like nobody. It is the first time you do it. It is nerve wracking. I, I shook. So I, I was shaking so bad. People thought I was going to have a seizure. It happens to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but once I overcame it really that, happens to everybody. right. So I can appreciate improv and stand up. Like it is, it is an art. And, it, and like, that's something. Have you, have you like done a lot of improv or stand up or anything like that? Yeah, I I, uh, I did a bunch of improv back in New York. Um, I, Sonic, if you, were, if you were there, I don't know if you if you saw it. Um, from like 2007 till 2012, so five years, uh, I was in a group called Start Trekking. Oh, I've heard that, of, uh, I've heard about that. Yes. Yeah, that was that was I was I was in that. Um, so literally a five year mission. Uh, it was this, <laughs> we we played at a bunch of like off Broadway theaters. It was at the Tank, at the Pit. Uh, uh, and then, then, like after that was over, I did a bunch of other stuff at pit, at the pit. I was in a couple other troops, a um, little bit at the U, at UCB. Uh, one thing that I did that was really fun. Um, I'm going all over the place here because no, it's okay. It's I'm, okay. no, I'm you're old. you're fine. Uh, That's the channel. That is the whole podcast. Right? But I I, I uh, do this thing called audio improv, where they'll like you know when you have an improv show, whether mm-hmm. it's short form or long form. And if you guys at home don't know what that is, this short form is kind of similar to like whose line is it anyway or they could just be short things and then long form oh excuse me somebody else wants to be on the show what do you want buddy bring him on get the guy get the cat get the dog get the dog bring in your pets mention matsuri 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 Matsuri. (laughs) buddy won't be on tv say hi to the internet this is guinness Guinness is saying hello. Is v- like, does, he also wants to get out. Does, so. uh, does Venus uh, Guinness. win love? Guinness. Guinness, yeah, like oh, Guinness. I just said Guinness. I just said Venus. Oh, I was boy. about to ask, like, does Venus fight <laughs> evil by moonlight and then win love by daylight? <laughs> no, no. Uh, Guinness, literally, when he was a kitten, would jump and put his entire head in people's beers. Um, <laughs> just dunking in there. That yeah, cat likes to get uh-huh. lit. 
So give me one minute. I will be right sure. back and then no finish worries, that story. You're good. You're good. All right. We're going to take this time to uh, let everybody know about our podcast guest for Monday. Velvet Vibes will be joining us on Monday. For those of you that don't know, Velvet Vibes is a podcast on YouTube. And they got like this old school jazz host of like a radio you know those old radio stations where they play <clears throat> jazz and hey they're cool cats and they're cool host cats in the city play all the greatest hits like that's the guy man he has such Something a great vibe me, oh. might be you. such laid back such cool like this guy's awesome this guy is definitely we gotta have him on the podcast also this joining us on the podcast next week hopefully we gotta talk to him we gotta invite him because he should be back from vacation is mr brad duct tape yeah and uh uh, Black Table Podcast might be joining us in the future. Ooh. Hey. These are other, we're uh, talking about other podcasters that are going to be joining as guests. On, other guests. Other guests. Uh-huh. Yeah. Me? Oh, no, yes. you're our guest now. You're our main focus right now. <laughs> especially later. We're, we're talking after about. After today. Yes. Because we, we invite other podcast hosts to advertise their podcasts on our show as guests. Oh, cool. So we try to help the community because we understand podcasting is a big, big, big community. And there are people that are still trying to find their strive. And I'm, and I ha- I've had, uh, like, like for me, like it, it's taken me a long time to get to this where I just flow and I can ask questions and I can just talk. Like before, when I first started, I was like, hi, welcome to the Geeks 5 Ever Podcast. I'm your host. Today we're going to be talking about drama in the community. <laughs> That's perfect for NPR, though. Like... <laughs> National Public Radio. Yeah. All, Hi, this is, this is all awesome, bullshit man. all the time. Hey. <laughs> uh, but you Sounds know, like woe is me. <laughs> Voiced by Peter oh, Cullen. We're back to Transformers. Right. There we go. Were you there at um, 2010 when we were in Disney World and somebody asked him, asked Peter Cullen about Eeyore and he was like, I don't get to be me anymore. And we were like, what? And then he voices like Optimus Prime and Eeyore to each other. That was the most hilarious yeah. thing. It, 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 I mean, it's only natural that your fan, your fans that suffer from depression want you to do the voice of the face of depression. <laughs> oh, it's you, Pooh Bear. My it's house cool. is a bunch of sticks. <laughs> Oh, boy. I offered to suck somebody off, but they would. Whoa! Like it. <laughs> Just took a turn. <clears throat> it escalated. Right. I For warned the... you this happens. <laughs> I'm like, look, we already had the discussion. Twenty dollars is twenty dollars. Oh, I got a little uh, little gift from my cat there. When, uh... Not the cat. <laughs> Scratched you. <Yeah. laughs> I am bleeding. Nice. Oh no, oh. we've drawn first I bleed blood. for you guys. That's it. <laughs> Remember, oh, Tipper, you, you're the first one. So yeah. the, the word of the day is Mexican. Every time we say Mexican, <laughs> you got a <laughs> drink. <laughs> Mexican, like Mexican, a, Mexican. I got a cherry action figure around here somewhere too. It'd be perfect. <laughs> That's our secret <laughs> word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> the secret word of the day is Mexican. Remember. <laughs> Usually it doesn't hit till like the second hour when he'll say it. So it's right? good. Like remember Someone. when when you go out to eat Mexicano food, if you cannot taste the struggle, it's not authentic. <laughs> we can't taste the struggle. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on. If you can't taste the poverty, it's not real. <laughs> it's hidden in the mole somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. We have some leftover mole in the fridge. I'm about to go attack it. <laughs> like whenever hey, whenever a couple I... of comments. Whenever we go out to eat, I always ask people, like, how spicy... And and we talked about this yesterday, but whenever we go out to eat, I'm like, how spicy is it? Is it white boy spicy, or is it small village in Mexico? They don't have a refrigerator, so they got to drown it in spices spicy. Oh, I cannot hang anymore. Like, last night, because I'm used to, like, eating actual fire. Like, I grew up in Flushing. I'm... I, I grew up in a Chinese Korean neighborhood being an Italian guy in Flushing. Like, spice That's just was spice. injected into me. And... There you go, a white guy that understands your pain, Goku. <laughs> so, so now, like my girlfriend's vegetarian, she doesn't like uh, like Flavor. spice so much, and I haven't had Stop. like really, really, really spicy food in so long. And yesterday, I just had it was like some like curry noodles, some red curry, and like flame coming out of my ears. <laughs> uh, and when I used to just like like bite peppers and stuff, so I, you lose it. Like if you don't use it, you lose it. So yeah. you lost your immunity, man. It's insane. 
<clears throat> what were you know what that's true that, that is true <laughs> though because like i've seen my family and spicy they, food. we go to a restaurant and they'll be like give me all this like make it extra spicy and then they're like mm-hmm. they'll bring like the spiciest food and then my uncle's like and get my like he'll, he's like more sauce more sauce my salsa por favor <laughs> like we've we've taken my uncles from mexico like they've never been like the first time they were outside of the country we took them to go eat chinese food here in the country and they served us our food and they sat there and stared at their food for five whole minutes and my dad's like what's wrong and my uncle's like i'm waiting for the tortillas <clears throat> because in mexico they serve tortillas with everything even american fast food it's an option pizza tortillas <laughs> <laughs> tortilla on a pizza there's this one thing in new york that you would probably think is sacrilege but mm. i do have like a weird flavor for uh there are these chinese tex-mex places and they're usually named like either fresca Ooh. or fresco tortilla <laughs> and they always have these like homemade tortillas i see you nodding you know what i'm talking about this stuff is good it mm-hmm. is not mexican we, we have or people or we any have kind actual, of actual <laughs> we have actual chinese restaurants in mexico where it's the asians like they're not from China, but they own the Chinese restaurant, but they speak okay. Spanish. Yeah. Que quiere, uh, que, que ordenar, like you know, they say it like with, with the Asian accent. Yeah. But uh, they fucking yell at us too, like they yell at us here in this country. In uh, El Salvador, <laughs> in El Salvador, my my uncle, he's a native Salvadorian. He actually opened a Chinese restaurant business. He actually Ooh. makes Chinese food over there. He, it's called the uh, Chino Tony Express because he's like. Hey, they know him as the Chinese maker, Chinese food maker. So like, hey, his name's Tony, Ch- Chino Tony. <laughs> That's what you should do. You should be like sponsored by Chino Tony and just like they get some like press for whoever. <laughs> like, yeah, international we should, press. We, there we you should, go. We should, we yeah, should. put a t-shirt on. Today's That's podcast cool. That's really is brought cool. to you by Mexican. Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> we got a drink. <laughs> I feel like I, I need a drink. I need to get, I need some scotch or something. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I have to say, there is a, there is a big, right now, there is a huge advantage to being a dual citizen. Because if I want to travel to Europe, all I have to do is get a Mexican passport and I can go. You can't get it for a U.S. one, though. Because I am a dual citizen. I am a Mexican citizen and I am a U.S. citizen. I am, I am actually a Mexican. Like, you know, I'm I've... not like... He doesn't just play one on TV. That, I get arrested like, why brows are real? I don't just... Play... My big... I'm so sorry. I, I no, no, no. I was, I was just gonna make one a one liner. I'm like, I don't just get it. I don't just play a Mexican on TV. I get arrested like one in real life. <laughs> you cut out there for one second. Let me. Uh, really Ooh. quick, fucked up racist joke. Okay. Cool. What do you call two Mexicans? That's... There's two Mexicans in a car. Who's driving? The police officer. Oh. <laughs> Is that really a joke? Or am I am I speaking from experience? I don't know. I can't tell Sasha anymore. Shakes his head in shame. <laughs> you you're right about the dual citizenship thing. Um, from what I hear from friends who are in Europe now, uh, and I've been thinking about doing that myself. And I'll I'll give you my di- my big deep dark dirty secret here as an exclusive on your show. Oh oh hey. wow! Um, Breaking news. I am a quarter French Canadian. Hey. You're what? Can Porter. smell the maple syrup from here. Did you say French? <laughs> French Canadian. Canadian. Okay, French okay. Canadian. I'm about to cancel the podcast. My my grandmother, my grandmother who uh, just turned 100 this uh, hey. August, uh, living with my parents. She's uh, she's she's French Canadian, married my Sicilian grandfather. So I'm Italian, 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 and French Canadian. Um, Love it. So just when real in quick, August. Just real quick, real quick. Um, I want to give a shout out to one of our followers who's also a member of Geeks Five Ever, Black Sonic, who celebrated his birthday yesterday, who turned 27. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday! Happy birthday. <laughs> Congratulations on not dying for another solar cycle. <laughs> Black Sonic is not is nowhere in relations with Keyblade Sonic. Just saying. They have the same last Still name, though. Occupied with noises. She are. They're different hedgehogs. <laughs> Sonic Adventure Two, the anime, the live action. <laughs> so Sonic Adventure the reason 2, why uh, I, I made a whole fuss about the whole French thing because I have a daughter named Zelda, and she's mixed. Oh, cool. She's uh, she's half white, and uh, 
like we were arguing like we had a cultural class over the name like oh i wanted to name her something like like selena or girl coo Isabella. <laughs> girl coo girl coo or chi that is gonna... so cool <laughs> and so like no no but I'm like veto that no, i wanted to name her something girl cool coo. like like selena or like but my, like the, a mom, to the mom wanted to name her something like i want to name her primula primula <laughs> what is that like a condiment they're gonna make fun of her in school how do you know because i'm gonna make fun of her <laughs> here's a list like well of what it, it's part of our, our well it's part of our like her my my grandmother is french i'm like ugh. you can't name her you can't name her you can't give the first name anything french she's like why not because my grandparents will disown my child why the french and mexicans don't get along like cats and dogs that's historical she's like since when history and i was like i I literally said this bitch it's called cinco de mayo (laughs) (laughs) there's a couple movies about that that you can uh, yeah yeah right like why do you think we don't call it french fries in spanish we say papa frita yep fried potatoes fried potatoes i actually didn't know that that's a that's literally because of the french like no <laughs> we'll go get some fresh fries no really no. But we, 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 french fries. mexicans <laughs> don't like the french. french and they're very particular about mix mixing with other races i don't want to get into that okay but like <laughs> i wanted to make a joke because you said french but then you said canadian like damn yeah, saved it with a Canadian. He ended it with a Canadian. Yeah. We, there's no <laughs> Mexicans. We're in the same boat. <laughs> Snow sickens. I have not heard that before. We make jokes about the president <gasps> all the time. We're gonna, we're gonna Snow build a wall Mex- around Mexico. We're also gonna build one around Canada. You two snow Mexicans. <laughs> Jeez, this is the way you say it like that. Snow Mexicans. Snow Mexicans. <laughs> Because they're snow Mexicans. Because they're snow Mexicans. Uh, but like, li- like what? what you Canadians. said you're Italian. You said you're French. You said you're Canadian. No French, just a uh, French Canadian. Um, like, yeah, uh, mostly together. mostly Italian, Sicilian, Calabrese. I think in in the French Canadian, there's a tiny bit of native, but nothing uh, to write home about. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 my genetic makeup, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can I can relate cool. with the Italian thing because I am part Italian as well. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not gonna say my last yes. name on the stream, but my last name is Italian. Where am? So is mine. <laughs> I didn't realize my last name was Italian until I worked at a hotel, and I was <clears throat> I was a front desk clerk, and I was like, "Hello, welcome to the Sheraton. How can I help you today?" Oh, your last name is Italian. I'm like, really? Mm. Yeah. And I asked my dad, "Dad, are we Italian?" He's like, "Yeah, we're something." <laughs> <laughs> My dad's like, we're we're white, so, we're we're considered white by law, but we're Aztec. Hold, on, I'll be right back, guys. Uh, oh, Jace, you're in charge. Ooh, damn it! <laughs> I I yield okay. my power to Super Jew. What is it? Okay, so I'm finally gonna have them words about the trilogy. The Several fuck words. was with those trilogy? What trilogy? The Prime Wars. What about it? Like damn, right in the feels. I don't want to like spoil it for anybody. That yeah, oh, I guess I, I was about to feels. say don't put spoiler alert. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it, but the feels. Yeah, I'm just gonna say that. Like, okay, so I saw obviously the movies. I know how the movies turned out, mm-hmm. and those of us that have seen the movies, y'all know how those turned out. And there was of course the cartoons, but that was just something I was not expecting. So sure I was like, that. Prime Wars or War for Cybertron? Which one? Haven't seen more for Cybertron yet. I will be totally honest with you. I'm sorry. We revoke your card. (laughs) Cannot go to any more bot cons. I think you're going to really like it. I think you're going to really like it. It's kind of got like this, like super serious band of brothers sort of feel to it. Um, So it's different than Prime Wars. Prime Wars, there's still kind of like it's it's like funny here and there and stuff. This like it was. There's funny jokes, but it's like but like like, that's yeah. But starting from that second season, it just took that turn and i was like what just happened oh yeah what just happened and then there's the third one and i'm just like nobody told me i wasn't prepared for this what the third one's the one with uh mark hamill in it too or, or he's like hey, the, the tail of this yes. thing. yeah when he comes in like oh god i forget that that line where he's like something children of my children right 
it was so um, good but then like you said right on, cool um you know you voice sludge and i was like that's pretty cool and just every uh, i want to get like into it but i can't get oh, into it i got to do like, uh trypticon too but I, you did I, yeah so but also like trypticon as uh, starscream because like I, yeah, it was weird so i have uh <laughs> was i was trypticon and starscream and then i was trypticon possessed by starscream so like for trypticon there was this weird kind of like uh one thing that i i do a lot is like creature noises um mm -hmm. so i did like this kind of like creature like <laughs> and like they would yeah. take that and then like mess with it uh <laughs> so it would it would have this yeah. weird kind of like ah, i can't do another but like there's this there's this grumble um yeah that they added something extra little thing to and like i, don't know, like, I, I could hear me I'm like oh that's cool like it's coming mm -hmm. out of this toy uh <laughs> the joke that we have in the in the house is like toys of things i voiced are allowed to be in the living room everything else has to be in the back office <laughs> so on top of the tv there's like a big trip to con because cool I placed him so i get to i get to keep this giant robot technicolor dinosaur <laughs> on top of the television what the um, fuck the comment guy, section yeah well, what was up jace is a jew former no jace it's jew former oh it's super jew, jew. Just like i've been redubbed <laughs> what did i miss finally talking about uh the war for prime wait prime wars trilogy prime wars. i said that oh i switched that in my head it's a really good show um i forget who made it but i have it but i saw it on the site that i like bootleg all my cartoons and stuff on I'd say that um okay that I, I, I borrowed from my friend i think who bought who bought, who bought the thing legally i think they're all streaming on rooster teeth now Mm -hmm. Like if you want to watch, thank them, God, like, Rooster uh, Teeth. I love Rooster yeah. Teeth. <laughs> and um, after Rooster Teeth uh, likes like, you too. I didn't mean to interrupt, but after yep. we're done, I do I, I do have a series of questions that I, I need to ask. Ask. Ask away. <laughs> of me? Well, yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> cool. I mean, you are the guest. You're the important yeah. one, not the rest I'm of us. Some schmo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what we were talking about before I got up and went and pee pee. Uh, we we're talking about improv. Improv. Yes. yes. That's it. See. See Wait, how, how, those things how work? Uh, okay, so there are a lot of people yeah. that are, and every time we have a voice actor on here, um, they always ask like you know, they always ask about voice acting like one like how to get into it and all this stuff. But how important do you feel is improv to the industry, like not just voice acting but as an actor as a whole? Uh, I think that the muscles that doing improv massages are integral, and however you get there, you get there. Um, I mean, it's always kind of a weird thing because they're like bottle dancers that everybody gives. And it's not that they're wrong. It's that they're kind of standard, you know, like acting classes, acting classes. It matters a whole lot more to be able to convey emotion in the scene than it does to sound just like Peter Griffin or whatever voice you're doing. <laughs> um, also, everybody's journey is different. Mm -hmm. There are people... Uh, I'm not a YouTube or Twitch or uh, guy. I, I don't understand it. I'm probably just too stupid to be. Uh, but like, yeah. like I, that's not my path. But it could be someone else's path. So like, there's never really like these conflicting sort of, well, you have to jump, jump through this hoop, jump through that hoop. Uh, D. Bradley Baker has this great website called I want to be a voice actor dot com. If you want to if you go there, you get some really great advice, things that you really should adhere to. But just always keep in mind, like, there's this the reason why i always hesitate to say this is the path mm -hmm. because it's easy to become depressed when it's not your path right if you haven't taken these acting class and haven't done x y and z uh and there are people out there that are paying the rent and making a living and loving what they do who got to that place in very like through doing shakespeare through doing uh video game reviews doing like all different kinds of things um and in the end it's just like if you love doing it, if you don't mind eating ramen noodles for a little bit, <laughs> you can do it, you know? Just do your homework. That's the, the, the main thing is like part of that homework, however you get there, get those muscles that mm -hmm. are, are working when you do improv, working. Get them fine-tuned. Because again, you're gonna be in something and you have to, especially with anime, when you do anime, and I, you guys all like anime, that 
it's not like a lot of times for new animation, I'll get the script beforehand, I get to read it. Sometimes I'll be like, you are playing the demon baby bird. And then you get there and you're like, you're also playing this main bad guy. Why did you tell me that in the first place? So you have to read it, come up with a voice, come up with an attitude. Uh, a lot of times the first or second line, uh, you have to get that sort of character down. And a lot of times you don't know what's happening in the end. So you can't like kind of cheat that. So you have to really be thinking on your toes. Uh, and to be able to do that is, is more than a boon. It is, it is, um, it is, uh, I, don't know, I think I'm answering your question. Um, mm-hmm. Well, tell me to uh, shut uh, no, up. no, you're uh, good. We not. do have an aspiring voice actor who is one of our co-hosts. Do it, man. On the scene. All right. <laughs> yeah. Check out that website. I mean, but like, you gotta love it. That's the only thing. You gotta, I, you gotta love it. You gotta really and, be uh, like ready to go whole hog and find new and inventive ways to make those ramen noodles. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you know the drill, man. Yeah, exactly. You have the Adam, facial hair my, for it. My, uh, my question is, uh, <laughs> actually I actually have a question regarding voiceovers. Um, do when it comes to you know starting off then heading to the professional way um what do you think what are your thoughts on like those who've done like fan projects before getting into like any professional work is there like do you ha- are do would those kind of people have like hurdles or anything like that or it's just depending on the like the producer or like the director or anything like that uh i did fan projects i mean my my thoughts are that's awesome that's practice that you're getting i mean <clears throat> I don't know who's directing those fan projects, uh, but I mean, it's, it, it's. I, I mean, are you asking like if, if it's looked down upon or something? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like that. Would people be like, "Oh, I saw you did this fan project years ago." Uh, yeah, we don't want to. Uh, yeah, there you. seems to be. I mean, don't put it at the top of your your resume when right, you're going right. for uh, for something professional. But mm-hmm. anyone who would shame that is, that's. Don't, don't pay attention to that. Um, there are a few voice oh, actors. No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. There it's are okay. a few voice actors in anime, the anime industry, mm-hmm. and we're talking about top tier anime that do shame fan dubs. And I can kind of see where they're coming from, but at the same time, mm. well, I mean, it, it, it depends. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. Like, wait, what do you mean by shaming? Like, they're. I'm gonna just say a name. This okay. Let me just put out a disclaimer. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect those of the other admins, guests, our sponsors of Geeks Five Ever. All opinions shared on this show are those of the individual spoken, and do not reflect anyone else on the current show with that being said sean shamel you if you ever see this you owe me a fucking apology dude <laughs> goku the voice actor of goku he's a bit of a dick I, I don't know him i mean i know who he is i've never met him he's very vocal he's very open to shaming team four star i don't know what that is team four star did dragon ball z bridge i know that did, now i know what he but um, he, I had mentioned him to Jason David Frank. I'm like, oh yeah, I met him, and he was kind of a douche to me. And Jason, Jason's reaction was like, oh, you caught him during one of his mood swings. I'm like, that's not an excuse. And Jason David Frank, who played Tommy from Power Rangers, also said, yeah, you're right. But like, I really like voice actors like you. Like you, like w- the reason why we have you here. It's to show people that you're a human being as well. You're down to earth, <laughs> that you can, you are like, there are people, some voice actors, there are some voice actors, I've only met like maybe one or two that are like, oh, and then there are pigeons flying. Oh. <laughs> We're indoors. <laughs> They're like, they walk through the door. Oh, That's expensive. Fucking all pigeons. The dubs. <laughs> Here come all the dubs. Angly. That's expensive. <laughs> And then there are like really cool down to earth voice actors that like that sit in the audience like, oh shit, this is my panel, right? Well, let me go sit in the panelist booth. I gotta say though, I've met a lot more of the latter 
uh, working in the business. Like mm-hmm. most everybody, I don't, I don't uh, particularly know who uh, personally who you're talking about, um, but like most everyone I've met, like you don't do this job unless you love doing it. And if you love doing it, mm-hmm. uh, you just got nothing but love to give out. Well, you know, the just reason why I- it, it hurt me. Because I, since since 1996 in Mexico, I've grown up with Dragon Ball. Almost 25 years. Dragon Ball. I've, I, I grew up in the hood in Houston. I grew up around gangs. I grew up around violence, gun violence. Someone even had a bomb threat at my school once when I was like 12. So I grew up around like some of the worst shit in the world. And the one, the one thing that I looked up to was Dragon Ball. And I really, really looked up to Goku. I based my personality off Goku. Goofy, a little dumb, never serious. But whenever whenever, whenever the going gets tough, I can get serious and I can throw down and I will stand up for my friends. I finally meet him. I'm like, hey, man, you know, it would really mean a lot to me if you would sign a, a wallet that's autographed by the Mexican voice actor of Goku. That, like, that would mean so much to me. And he was like, oh, he, he, he didn't even make eye contact. He's all like, yeah, you know, I don't really sign other things signed by other voice actors of Goku. And I was like, okay. How much is your autograph? 30 bucks. I'm like, for 30 bucks, if I want you to sign my ass, you'll sign my ass. Mm. I'm also very confrontational. <laughs> I almost got into a fight with Voltaire who did some of the music for Billy and Mandy. Very confrontational. Very confrontational. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then again, he called me a dirty Mexican. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, but like that really hurt me. Like, you know, you don't talk to like, you don't talk like that to the fans. Uh, I've, I've auditioned for voice acting in Mexico. I auditioned to do the theme song for Dragon Ball Super when they were going to dub it. I auditioned for some of the newer anime they were going to do. They were going to dub Naruto in Mexico. And I auditioned for that. You know, minor shit here and there. Because mm-hmm. I can speak Spanish. I can speak some Spanish. Like, hola, como estas? Yo me llamo Jesse Goku. And yo estoy aquí para say los voices de Naruto. Okay. Los voces para Naruto. Well, there's different Spanish accents. You got to, orale, sabes que yo estoy aquí para comer tacos and tomar tequila and burritos, burrito, burrito, burrito. That's Naruto. Okay. Okay, like, oh, and then you got the, <laughs> the Then you got the, hola, hola, como estas? Aquí estamos con Geeks Forever, con Frank Torero. Hablando de Transformers and de Los Juegos de Nintendo. And then you got the Spanish accent. ¿Cómo estás? Aquí estamos con Geeks Fiber. Hablando con Frank Tordedro. Arr. Take me. <laughs> Take me. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, I can understand, like, but I met a lot of voice actors. I met a lot of actors. And. They all, they always seem so cool, down to earth. They're individuals. Like these are people as well. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. They are people. They're just like everybody else. They shit and eat. <laughs> are you a people? Are you people? You shit? No, no, no. I'm a robot. <laughs> <Okay>. Got it. <laughs> this is the voice I'm putting on. Normally no, I actually, no, but we like, still gotta change your definitely. batteries. Oh, oh imagine if you were like Buzz Lightyear and we put the batteries wrong and you have a Spanish accent. I voiced You'll- him once. Did really? you really? Yeah, it was um, it was it was a little bit, it was gibberish. But did you ever hear <laughs> Little Big Planet? Yes, you were the uh, oh for the DLC costumes. Correct. Yeah, I was I was Buzz Lightyear, and then I was also Zerg, so it was my own dad. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Buzz is actually cool. what inspired me to do more Spanish voices. El vaquero. ¿Dónde <laughs> está? <laughs> so, Gosh. no, but like that's the reason why like we we are so. Like, that's the reason why, like, that is one of the major reasons why we really, really wanted you to be here. Because we know you have fans. We know people are going to watch this a week or a month from now. And we want people to see that, you know, this these are people and they're human beings. And they're very down to earth. And they have real problems or they have, like, you know, like, like you know, TV shows. you got to watch TV. There's got to be some shows that you're like, oh, my God, I can't wait till the next season of this show or that show. Do you have any shows like that? <laughs> well, what shows I'm watching? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, we just started Lovecraft Country. That's really, really, Ooh. really good. Really good show. If you had said um, Supernatural, we could have spent the last, like, we could have spent a whole hour say, talking about that. You know what I what I really love is mm-hmm. the Orville. Have oh. you guys watched Oh, the Seth Oh, I love that show. So it's so good. great. You know, I and, and I'll say, like, I'm, I'm a Star Trek guy. I love uh-huh. 
Star Trek, uh, Live, Eat, and Breathe It. Um, I'm not gonna say so your pictures, guy. I keep saying like Star Trek. I love Star. Trek. I love Star Wars. I'm like, no, I'm a big fanboy. Look at the Dungeons and Dragons book behind me. Uh, <laughs> that was a question way back in the way back in the day. Like, what was that? What's his role playing face? Can he do a a D and D thing? Hoodie Warrior wanted to know if you'd be in a D and D game with him. I was like, I'd be in a D and D game. Little... So that's the, an amazing thing about this apocalypse that we're living in now. I, I just got this webcam, uh, which is weird seeing what I actually look like without the stupid. You look uh, amazing. Laptop, internal thing. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but mainly because um, since the apocalypse started, I am in two D and D campaigns, a Spelljammer campaign, a Rifts game that we just and Rifts is rough trying to make those characters. You remember the old Palladium system from like it takes forever. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, and then a buddy of mine did a Sabat game from uh, from Vampire. Um, I played it. And I, they, the, most of these are all, and we were doing a Star Wars, the um, the Western Games one, and then I just grabbed the uh, the last unicorn, uh, not last, yeah, last unicorn uh, games, Star Trek Next Generation, one. So we alternate week to week, and these are the same guys that I've been playing D and D with since first week of high school in 1991. Oh wow! wow. I, 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 don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. Hold on. Oh, go ahead. Yes, he does. Do I he hear does. voices? Do you? It's coming from your background. Is it? What are these voices telling you, Goku? Meet the cat. I think no, no. he has audio playing in his own background. From what, though? <laughs> I thought it was playing from my Google uh, speaker, but I disconnected it. I, I think I know what it is. Um... So the Zeta Reticulans secretly control the government, and uh, they come from the binary star system. No. Why are you laughing? You can't know. Super he's a, supposed to he's a dual out. citizen. He can't know. Oh, Sorry. you know what I think it's from? I think it's Sorry. from the Discord. Well, You're they're creating this. Discord. Yeah, No, he's in a Discord chat right now. I checked it earlier, and he has his mic off, but his headphones are still on on the chat. So it's feeding through one of his other things and projecting, and he just now figured it out. Yeah. People still use Friendster, right? Hey, guys. Is it there finally it staying? Oh, no. Did you break it? <laughs> I, 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 I muted. I put deaf in. Uh, no! <laughs> yeah, I was like, Jesus Christ, am I so here? Can, I can get some glue? Right, put some glue in there. I've got this uh, immortal spark. I cannot technically be killed. So this is true. I'm so you're be fine. fine, Super Jew. Why do you sound it like just... the villain from the Smurfs? That's Starscream. What are you talking about? But he Have you not like... known that I was doing that this whole time? <laughs> Remember, I've never seen uh, Transformers in America. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's uh, does it? Is it just like a thing that pops back in, or did it? I snap? hope so. It's well, a model. It should, it should be a ball joint. In. If it's yeah. a little torso, it should be on a ball joint. Yeah, you should be okay. Yeah, just this is the model, she, though. She's this just is playing the, with the, the model balls. toys one, right? It should yes. still have the, from the hip, should have a ball joint for the, yeah, the middle just, part. It's supposed to move a little bit. Just work the shaft as to play with the balls before, <laughs> I don't think you had it in all the way, <laughs> which is also not yeah. <laughs> appropriate. We don't get to talk yeah. about D&D on the podcast because Goku is, hates it. I don't yeah. hate Satan. it. He does. There we no, go. I don't. Also, like pieces of your helmet yes, was falling. One of the, this one fucking of the, thing is not made of, for one, beginners. I apologize. Someone that I am talking to is I mean, very into D and D, so I love D and D. It is not for everyone. Half uh, into D and D. I will say that is uh, just to kind of connect that. See that? Uh, looks like we're doing a podcaster. Uh, to connect that to what we were talking about before, Dungeons and Dragons is, of course, part of my origin story in how I got into improv and voice acting as well. Because DMing me? is like you're literally playing a hundred different characters and as, as NPCs for these things. And especially when I'm DM or if I'm playing or whoever is, uh, like you actually have to get into the mind of that character and do what the character would do, not what you think is the correct decision. Give so, like, a, like, what's a, like what's a scenario you've put your uh, campaign through as DM? Mm-hmm. Oh, what that have put them through? Yes. How oh, many boy. times have they fought Starscream? <laughs> 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 Well, the stars gives it this campaign. <laughs> it's interesting you say that. I, I had this idea a, a while back um, of making a homebrew Transformers RPG that I would bring <gasps> to conventions. And then it would be like, Starscream is your dungeon master. 
uh, and then you'd be playing on Cybertron, and then it'd be like a raffle to see who played or whatever the for some charity nonsense or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shut up and take my money. Like, like, did, is that something you think people would dig? Or I'll be into that. I'll do that as soon as we get to go back to cons and whatever. I'll be the first one there. Cool, cool. Because, because, like, I this is like, like I said, I'm in the same second ed game for the good part of three decades now, and like, this is like, this is how. You know, we used to do this stuff. So you if might I might have to change somehow, the edition. What's that? You might have to change the edition for new people. Mm. Second edition. <laughs> it would be home second it would edition be like is the hard most shit. simplistic things. Yeah. You know, oh, it would yeah. not be. There's no Thacko in this game. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, to but yeah, AC like, zero. Like, like so, you guys go to hit conventions. Do you think that there'd be like some kind of uh, people would dig that? Yeah, uh, I'm sure I you can find people an audience do. for there's, it. There's uh, a there's a lot of like. You know, for there's conventions specifically, like for example, anime. There'll still be people playing D and D. Like they'll have a panel dedicated to that, which is, uh, cool. and also like gaming conventions too. Like not TFCon. just video games. They also do like you know tabletop. Uh, yeah, like Gen yeah, Con, and Gary Con, yeah. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Con just released their own like Yu Gi Oh game, so I wouldn't. I don't see the trading cards that um over everyone was doing. Okay. <laughs> everyone was doing. Yugi boy. But yeah, like I don't see why not. Why can't we have like a Transformers D and D? If you can have a Transformers like Yu Gi Oh game, why yeah, not? I, or like, I think I'll, I'll try to. Uh, so I loved the uh, the CCG, um, and here's here's another re- weird weird coincidence that kind of came out of nowhere. So the Transformers CCG <laughs> uh, that Wizards put out, yeah. first of all, it's fucking cool. Like in the artwork that they contract for that, and yeah, it was really good. I like the system. Turns out the guy who ran that is one of my oldest friends, this guy Drew from New York, and he's actually DMing me in a Spelljammer game right now. Oh. <laughs> I, it, came from, it was like... You jerk. We didn't realize, <laughs> you know, until we found out later, like, oh my God, we're in the same damn franchise. I, th- I think that just ended now, which is sad because it was a really cool system. Like, it was a really, it was a really fun yeah. uh, strategy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's Drew. Yeah. He works for Wizards. I think he's on Magic right now. Cool. And like, so it's this is why like I I'm a little bit convinced that we're living in a simulation that this is the matrix cuz like yeah. there's weird coincidences like that constantly. That makes um, sense. Why would anyone ever compare Chick La Fay to Popeye's chicken? I don't see it. No. Chick La Fay. <laughs> Chick La Fay. Chick La Fay. I thought Chick you Lafay. hated the French. I, I don't I don't want to say their name. No, no, worries, Chick no worries. Lafay. Chick Lafay. Okay. My yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Or just say CFA. Yeah, my the paternal people, grandma, don't make like no, no. fried chicken. My though. paternal grandmother chicken. before she passed used to call it chicka fill. Chicka fill. <laughs> I like that. Uh, no, but no, no, no. They, well, yes, because Popeyes uh, it specializes in just pure. They they specialize in just pure fried chicken. But like, if you can't like, we went to a Popeyes. We were at at, at an anime convention in Austin, and we go through the drive thru and you can hear the lady yelling at somebody inside. Listen, motherfucker, I said no. Get your ass out of my restaurant. And she's like, welcome to Popeye's. What do you want? Was it Janine from Ghostbusters that was serving you? And I'm like, and I'm looking at my friends and I'm like, there's me. There's a 17 who's an honorary Mexican. And then we got Rummy, who's also another honorary Mexican. Then we got our friend, uh, Black Sonic, who's obviously black. And we're like, "Mm." I'm like, "Mm, mm, mm." you know, the chicken here is going to be delicious. (laughs) We'll take a 30 piece family meal. Like, like, and like. I love when it comes to fast food restaurants or any restaurants in general. I love the sassy black, a mother figure woman. Like we were at Whataburger and this lady was like, like this was at the beginning of COVID when everything was going disarray. And she's like, come forward, come forward, baby. Come on. She's like, and I pull forward. I listen to all of her instructions. And then this one guy behind me just moves forward, almost hits me. And she gets fucking mad. She's like, motherfucker, did I tell you to move? <laughs> this is a water burger. Nice. She like had your back. Oh, she's a sad. She don't give a fuck. This is her job. And she's yelling. She that is literally she didn't yell motherfucker. She yelled something else that I'm not going to say on the podcast. <laughs> no. So it was much worse than I'm selling it for. She's like, did I tell you to move? Not just for that. You're going to get your food last. <laughs> <laughs> back of the line. Damn. Well, I just have to love, do a dandy though. I, I run into that, but I, I do have a. He, he instinctively changes it when he hears D and D. 
<laughs> role playing games. <laughs> Popeye's that, chicken. Well, no, no, no. That, the reason why, like, okay. the one D and D game that I did play, oh. and I've explained to them. I've heard it sounds DM, like a regular D and D game to me. The DM was just way too serious. Like he gets mad if the game isn't oh. taken seriously or if it ends too early because he made a flaw. He's gonna slide into your DMs. Like there was one, <laughs> there was one game where my friends played without me. Where like they had to get one of the, there was one girl in the campaign. They had to get her memories back, and at some point within like forty five minutes within the campaign, they're like, "Oh, you've found me. You get a wish, and I will grant you any wish." My friends like any wish, any restrictions. It's like no, there are none. All right, I want her memories back. And that was the end of the I game, and my, the DM got fucking mad because he don't, fucked up. Don't put a thing in the game in that early to do that thing. Then yeah. right, but yeah, he got mad a, because it sounds like, like a DM thing. Like because yeah, like bad. He DM. can like I, I've had like it weird the other way where like a DM would want you to go into the forest, and part of the again. Part of that, like training your thinking on your toes, is not just for the players, it's for the DM themselves. Mm -hmm. Where if they want you to go into that forest, they have to figure out a way to naturally make you go into the forest. Then mm -hmm. you choose that. You know, it's almost like being a lawyer. You know, like you're making the <laughs> you're making the player do what you want to do but without I, their own volition. I was a natural. I was a natural. I get him in the forest. I was a natural troll. So like, we we start this campaign. It's like, okay, you can either stay in the tavern and gear up for the next day, or you can go scout the dungeon that we're gonna so he gave everybody two options one of two options okay you can do this or you can do that well what if i'm like what if i just stay in the bar get drunk and pass out on the floor and he's just like okay then you lose stamina i'm like fuck it hang over it is <laughs> i mean like if you're doing it purposely to antagonize the dungeon master and like well no like, i've never like, this was oh the very... i burned the orphanage why because you know like <laughs> yeah. i've never played DD, so i was like if we're giving if i'm given options my, this my is theory what goku well, would do in real like, life here's the thing. So, i don't know <laughs> have you ever watched professional wrestling before oh yeah <laughs> so in high school i had two role models eddie guerrero and i'm brock your bobby <laughs> eddie guerrero and brock lesnar in, wow. in, when I was 18 years old, I could bench press 400 pounds. But I was like Eddie Guerrero. I lie. I cheat. <laughs> I, I steal. Homes. And I do like the whole. Yeah. And I still do that today. <laughs> I can't lift 400 pounds. Literally. I can lift 320 bench press. But that's because I tore my rotating cuff. Cage fighting. I did the whole Ooh. MMA thing for a oh while. Oh, my God, dude. I'm 32. Cage never I, stood I, a chance, I'm actually, I, I did professional wrestling for a while. That's awesome. You took a, then you took I, a I did professional wrestling. I did actual professional wrestling for a while, and then I did MMA because I, I chose MMA over professional wrestling because it was less political. Hmm. So hmm. I have a uh, a professional record of four and four. I'm not afraid to admit that I've gotten mass whooped. The one time that I should have tapped out, I didn't, and they they caught me in an arm bar. I didn't tap out, and they tore my rotating cuff. The rotating cuff is in the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can't for no 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 it's, it's not just for to you the neck bone no 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 it's not just for you though it's for our audience for in case they don't know it's also called the rotator cuff well no they call it the it's rotating a, cuff because I can't do a 360 you can't rotate yeah you don't have rotating plus I don't have the same strength I don't have the same strength anymore I only I have I have half my strength yeah Is rotator it cuff injury on its own no really. no no it, it's completely torn. He didn't get it fixed when it happened. Even, so. even so, with that, so yeah. I discovered even with surgery. That's it doesn't. Yeah. You, there's no guarantee. So I discovered. Mm. I always thought that my max out when it benching was 405. Turns out I was wrong. Turns out it might have been more. You gotta count the bar. Well, no, 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 no. Apparently, maxing out means you only do it once and that's it. I did 405 like. Four, five or six times. I'm impressive, man. I played Jeez. football. I played football. I was going to go into the... I, I, I wanted to join the Army. I, I was going to get a scholarship to go to uh, to play football in college, but I wanted to go into the Army because mm -hmm. I was a Mexican and at the time... I don't want to get into that. Anyway, so, like, <laughs> at the time... What the fuck were we talking about? I don't uh, know. No, we were talking about Wait, D &D. We were talking about D&D. So D&D, <laughs> my... my uh, That's what I'm here for. I'm here to guide right, everybody. Right, right, right. So, so, like, I've always been, like, the... Orale! You know, I've always been, like, the... I always tried to be charismatic. 
I always try to be like, lie, cheat, steal. So the Eddie Guerrero mentality. Eddie I have the Eddie Guerrero mentality, and I mm-hmm. cried when he died. I really did. Mm-hmm. Fifteen years, man. So, Jesus. Um, wow. Anyways, so we go to the dungeon. Everybody's trying to kick the door down. They're trying to open it. They're trying to force it open. I'm like, and it's my turn. Okay, Goku, what are you gonna do to open the door? Well, I'm gonna knock on the door and yell pizza. <laughs> And the dungeon dragon just like. See, now, if I was the DM there, right, Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, maybe you don't use pizza if that doesn't exist. But if you did that, like, I would end up giving you more experience points because you're trying to play around the puzzle of it all. And that's that's the beauty of it is that you're you're basically a puzzle maker, a constant puzzle maker. But the puzzles uh, occur either within the narrative or, or they're actual puzzles. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the most fun. So by you saying I'm going to ask for pizza to me, that is, well, now we don't have to break down a door. We save some of our strength. We save whatever uh, uh, spells we would have to tax that we can only memorize once a day. And I would roll to see if the people on the other side of the door are stupid enough to fall for that. Well, here's here's the catchy. Here's the catchy thing. So when I when it was my turn, five other people had gone before me. They uh-huh. had rolled for it to open the door. They tried kicking it down. They tried tearing it down. They tried right. attacking the door. And I, it was finally my turn. I'm like, I'm going to knock on the door and yell pizza. And the DM was like, whatever, fine, roll for it. I rolled for it. You had to roll a 16. I rolled. I don't, I don't remember exactly what I rolled, but I know it, was a, it, it matched the requirement. Yeah. And, it, and like, okay, you rolled for it, and it, the door slides open. I'm like, that's right, because nobody rejects pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we go in this castle it's like a dungeon so we're, we're looking for like this secret lever so everybody's taking their turn at least finally it goes full circle because there's eight of us playing eight like seven people go by okay goku your turn what do you do all right i'm gonna molest this statue i'm gonna sexually molest the statue you're just messing with him at that point. I though. was. I His really was. Like, was your, did you make Have your character you saying, like, him? he's a statue molester. Let me, like, like unless you really. <laughs> but it worked, though. It worked, though. Because I'm going to sexually molest the statue, and I'm going to roll for it. It worked. Lever appears. Oh, I made him excited. <laughs> <laughs> it unlocked a secret dungeon that apparently was part of the story. So we were supposed to fuck with the statue. Well, hey, you know. He just did it, it in a weird sort way. Sort of. Yeah. And but so, I, I, at that point, I'm getting drunker and drunker. I don't feel like yeah. playing this anymore. I use Fireball, killing all my teammates. Roll for it. <laughs> Works. I killed the villain, and I killed my teammates. He's like, congratulations, Goku. You sur- you're you the sole survivor. What do you do? I'm going to go mow lawns for a living. <laughs> <laughs> he was so pissed that, like, it's not that I didn't have fun. It's just that it pissed him off, <laughs> and I just wasn't invited back. I don't know why he wouldn't have been. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I'm, gee, I just, wonder why. <laughs> you did just fucking ruin his entire storyline. <laughs> when when I dole out uh, XP as a DM, uh, yes, I do more so for like proper role playing than actually, you know, killing the monsters. Saving. Mm. The, I did more whatever. damage though. Yeah. Well, and, good and that, good job, Paladin. <laughs> 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 like, and and if that Paladin, like, you know does something stupid because his character would do that in the situation, even though it's a stupid move, I will give more XP to that character, even if they didn't figure things out. Yeah. Because it's a role-playing game, and that's the fun of it. I mean, otherwise, it's just a dungeon crawl, and you can play Yahtzee and roll some dice. And here, see if here, you here's something you, know, you could appreciate, and I feel like you could appreciate this. There was one friend that wanted to get me back into Dungeons & Dragons, and not just Dungeons & Dragons, but we also did LARPing. Okay. Oh, I, love, I love good LARP. And so they, they don't really have a lot of rules. Just don't kill each other. Don't physically kill each other. You can hit okay. each other like pinatas. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, dude, I want to be the same because I, you know, my name is Goku. He's like, okay. So he helped me come up with this. Like, okay, yes, you can be a Saiyan. However, if you use any of your Saiyan abilities, physical strength, key blasts, you drain your stamina so much that you have to constantly carry around. I had to constantly carry around barrels of food with me. That was the compromise. I had to constantly carry food for stamina. And every time I use super strength or super 
uh, or my any of my abilities, it would drain 60 to 75% of my stamina. Cool. <laughs> and that was really cool. Like he integrated a Saiyan yeah. into a D&D &D game. I'm like, dude, that's actually really creative. And Vibing the Panama way, like, Panama. Like, Welcome to the podcast. Mm -hmm. We're talking about D&D. &D. We're talking about nerd shit. <laughs> Mm -hmm. For the first time in forever. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's the I'll that's right the reason. No, you're fine. But that no, like for like you guys always wonder why I didn't really like it. That's the reason why. We've heard that story I, before. It sounds right, like a regular D and D game. I feel like you didn't hear all the details. Oh, it's Gabby. Gabby. It's Gabby. Hey. Hi. Gabby and uh, Super Jude bonded. Like, oh, they shared kinks. They Got were all on. there. I know. I I took down notes. <laughs> Everyone how, here, everybody how, was already here for this. How yeah. to impress so, Super Jew. Got it. Except for... Voice Transformers. <laughs> At least I'm taking notes. So I'm trying. Do, I care. Notes. Producer's notes. There you go. <laughs> producer's notes. Well, Hey, Pachinko took some notes too, apparently. He's still bringing them up. <laughs> he's still, still trying to get you to go I'm on a date with him. Notes. We're kind of in a pandemic. It's not a good time for me to go on dates with anybody right now. <laughs> Pachinko, let's fight. <laughs> hey, Pachinko. Hey, Pachinko. Well, he lives right. He Welcome lives back. Right, so. It's kind of <laughs> hard to have kinks when you're demisexual. Oh, thing to walk our guest in. walked in like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, talking about out of context. <laughs> we did a podcast the other day about kinks. Oh, uh, okay. Like the kinks? The, the like, band? Yeah, the no. Kink, no. Yep. It was about the band. <clears throat> They're a good band, by the way. They are good. Going back to what you were saying about the 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 D and D yes. thing that that knocked you out of uh, wanting to play D and D, I had something similar. Um, and you're talking, uh, Jace, you brought up LARPing, right? Love LARP. You love LARP. <laughs> I never LARPed, uh, but I used to work at rent fairs for about ten years. I was a, a fencer, right? Um, oh. And I did like live steel. Ooh. And they would have like LARPers that came like at the rent fairs and whatnot. And like, of course, I've got a real sword, so I can't really do anything, right? Um, but oh, what could. turned me off from, from heavy weapon fighting, like Rattan, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 like I said, I'm five foot six. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm quick, or at least I used to be. Uh, but I was always like fascinated by heavy and this guy lends me his armor and then, uh, or there was like a, the, you know, the loner armor that every group has. I had the loner armor on. And it kind of fits. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look like Frodo sneaking into Mordor with like orc mm. armor that's like five times too big. Uh, sorry. Uh, so <laughs> the guy goes, oh, is that point of your leg? Is there a blue spot there? And I said, no. And he takes this thing. And the one part of my leg that wasn't armored hit me as hard as you can. And Ooh. for those of you guys listening at home that don't know what heavy weapons is, <laughs> basically you're pretending to use long swords, but you're actually using baseball bats made out of rattan. And he yeah. did it as hard as he can. And this guy, like, he, he was, he probably transformed into a tank. He was a big fella. And he used that weight from around him to push into, hit me on the leg as hard as he could. Ow. That actually See, reminds me of Mexico. That sounds about right. Mexican. <laughs> Never did have you again. So do, do you use, like, when you do LARPing, is it mostly, like, bot for weapons or... or like how, what do you do? Oh, what we did it was, it was, we did a boffer weapon style because for safety reasons, that very reason of breaking someone's leg. Yeah. Uh, and for me, it depends on which country you're talking about. You can just beat people with sticks, baseball bats. You got to understand. At one point in Mexico, and for Whiffle LARPing, ball bats. Uh, we we didn't have uh, foam swords or or PVC pipe. We just mm -hmm. hit each other with sticks and threw rocks at each other and hope nobody went blind. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. We does. We fight with sticks and children, and then we get older. He's like, oh, we that's should why like, when, I did, when I did when I did professional wrestling, when I did professional wrestling, and I they flipped me. They did a, a two legs. The four year olds are off hand parry device. Hashtag eat, don't keep. No, they did a carry. They they did a flip. So they do a um, what's the fucking name of the wrestling move where they they hook you by like the arm and they flip you over. Arm drag. Um, hip, arm drag. Yeah. They did an arm, arm drag to me, arm and drag. I and I hesitated. And I fucked up, so when I jumped to do the flip to take the bump, I landed on my neck. Ooh. And you gotta understand that the mat, the mat it's, is like, it's like wood, plywood. thinner than this. But it's like this fucking thick. 
It's like a mix. And they in the first lesson in professional wrestling, they tell you, listen, man, you got to learn how to land or you're going to break your neck. And I took that shit like a champ. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? How did you hmm. not? I, I did I, like I did Lucha Libre in Mexico. Oh. Okay, so depending on where you went in Mexico, Lucha Libre, you have the plywood this thick and the mat that thick, or it's vice versa. Or it's vice versa to the point where you only have the plywood and no mat. Mm -hmm. Just a sheet to make it look good. Jeez, man. Just to stop you. And uh, (laughs) so I saw a Mexican drive by and they threw rocks. So there was a LARPing, and we just picked up branches and sticks and broomsticks and we just hit each other like pinatas. (laughs) <laughs> that was LARPing in Mexico. And that's where you almost killed Jace. I was if five I, at the time. I was drinking. I, was, I nearly died earlier. But I, I was five I at the time. I my liquid. I, I didn't know idea. what we were doing. Was I was too. five years old at the time. I didn't know what we were doing. So all I knew was we were grinding sticks and beating the shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. If we weren't playing Nintendo, we were beating the shit out of each other. Hey, it was the same in Queens, man. We, we used to do the... This actually, Super Drew, here's, here's another Transformers story for you. Yes. Uh, 1986, me and my buddy David snuck in to Transformers the movie. Oh, we, yeah? Uh, what, what we used to do in New York is, again, admitting something uh, uh, you illegal. Got the touch. Uh, you'd buy one ticket, and then the other person would go in the back, and you'd be able to push the door open because okay, one yeah. didn't exist yet. And the other kid snuck in, so we did that. We're watching the movie. Can, and it, I want to ask, ask it, you just no. one off topic question. It's just real okay. quick. The one? What would it take to get you to be a guest for a convention, but not actually for the con? I don't know what you mean. Like, yeah, what do you we, mean? You know, like we decide, like, hey, can you come be a guest at this convention, but you're not part of the con? Oh, like you're not a formal guest on the right. roster. You just want to okay. come hang right. You just want to show up. <laughs> right. Oh, hang out. were you there? Hey, were you there at 2013 at San Diego uh, BotCon? Yes. Okay, yeah. Paul did that. What he just, I mean, like, like, walked like, on like, up. Well, well, like, if you have, like, a fee, like, well, I'll do it for, like, a couple hundred bucks. Just pay, pay my hotel, pay my flight ticket. Something like that, you know? Like, I'll come up here at the con, but I'm not officially part of the con's guest list. So, you want me to go to the con, but not be at the con? No, no. You can be at the con. <laughs> we'll buy your badge. We'll buy everything, but... You're just not formally invited right, right, right. by the convention. So you wouldn't show up on like any official. You're not required to do papers. anything. Just hang out. Yeah. yeah there. Possibly drink. Chill out and drink. You gotta. Oh, hit me up. I don't right. know. This <laughs> sounds like vacation. you gotta drink. You gotta drink and have yeah, fun. That's like, just, that's that's like a that's lot of work. You say you want to give me a vacation somewhere? <laughs> yes. Okay. So let, uh, yeah, somebody uh, asked I back guess, in the let day. Me, let me get. I guess. Let me put it out there. Do Shameless it. advertising segue. Geeks Five Ever is actually. Officially hosting Clash of Beers 2 at yeah. Delta H Con in July. That's Next right. Year. Clash of Beers, Deacon Rap, Chad, and Under yeah. Subsidence will officially be performing. And we're introducing a new alcoholic drink, Broly. Plus, Super Saiyan Blue and Ultra Instinct will be available. 21 and up to drink. 21 and up to enter. If you're below the age of 21, you're not getting in because we're IDing everybody. Geeks yeah. 5 Ever will be at Delta Age Con in July, Houston, Texas, at the West Chase Marriott Hotel. July 2021. Wakanda forever <laughs> at Geek with Geeks 5 Ever at Delta Age Con. So, what do you think? Jeez, that seems like an awful long time to think about something. It's a year from now, but. Are you asking me now? Yes! <laughs> well, no, we'll, 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 this thing. No, no, we'll no. talk about it. No, yeah. no, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about it after, but yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel at the idea? Have you ever yeah, gone on a vacation before? Still in stay? I mean, jeez. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. Tomorrow at this point. If you go back and you listen to the podcast, the very beginning, you hear like a, you hear a metal band play the, the music we use for the very beginning. Okay. They're called Under Subsidence. They're okay. actually performing in our hotel room. How oh, cool. The con is so small. Like, they're small, but they're getting so big, they don't even realize mm-hmm. it. They don't have a band come to perform. So, one year, we had Under Subsidence come do an acoustic performance in our suite, in our hotel. That's cool. And they and it was the talk of the town. People were talking about, like, holy shit, 
Did you hear they had a concert in a hotel room? <laughs> like, even the hotel knew about it, but they couldn't do shit to us because, well, they did book 14 hotel rooms in a row. So we're going to book a lot of rooms. We, we'll give you a room. We'll pitch in for, like, a flight ticket. Maybe get you, like, a kosher meal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, Carlos Pacheco is asking, no Jiren drink? No Jiren drink? Uh, there the is a drink. There is a Jiren. It's called Everclear. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's after 9 o'clock. Or 7 for we're still, we're, seven I mean, you. No, I mean, we're going to... As long as our guest is, I'll out. tell the tail end of that story. And, okay. Uh, so, so we we we're just just to, where you're talking about hitting each other with sticks. Broke your uh, leg. So we so we're watching Transformers the movie, oh, and yes. in Transformers the movie, if you guys haven't watched it, Get the main character you got the, the touch, dude. Yeah, exactly. Doo, 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 doo. You got, so, the, you got power. the power. Yeah, the, the father figure to every latchkey kid in the '80s, Optimus yeah. Prime. He yeah, stands up there, and then he just buys it. He dies, but he doesn't just die. He turns gray and his head goes to the side. And so we're the, the, the entire first half of or whatever before that it was only mm -hmm. like 15, 20 minutes into the movie. Yeah. Uh, we were like, yeah, that's so cool. Whoa, this guy died. He died crazy. Wow, this is cool. Metal music. Ah, right. And <laughs> Optimus Prime dies. Total silence. Yeah. Me and yeah. my friend next to me, the rest of the movie, total silence. Because when he died, we heard next to us, so we cried in front of each other mm -hmm. so when we got out of the theater yeah. we were like that was awesome and we each picked up sticks from the parking lot of movie world in Douglas and Douglas Queens <laughs> and just beat each other because at some point in the movie they used lightsabers <laughs> and we were like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you cried in front of me <laughs> <laughs> like subconsciously you know because they were all little boys and like it, it would we you know nobody said it but we we're like yeah that was, that no was no I, I think I, I think what you meant was nobody said it but where's the candy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, no scotch it's just like give me a pixie stick straight <laughs> <laughs> yeah lightsabers in rc was designed to look like princess leia if i recall oh correctly. yeah with the big old with the things yeah like, the things the uh, nerds <laughs> Gosh. Uh, yeah, speaking well, I mean, of that, that whole thing was designed like Star Wars. That poster even had like when he's holding yeah. the Matrix. It's basically Luke holding the. It's, it's the new hope. It's you have a question hope, right? uh, in the comment section. Uh, speaking of Transformers, Death Battle did Optimus Prime versus Gundam last year. Oh. Your thoughts? I didn't see it. Who won? Oh. Who do you think would win? Hold on. Who do you think would win? Optimus yeah. Prime or Gundam? The, Gundam. the Gundam. original Gundam. The original Gundam. Gundam? See, I think I think Prime only because his reflexes will be faster because he is the robot. He's an alien that just happens to be giant and metal. Mm -hmm. But there's Would always going to be a fraction of hesitation when you have a pilot. It's not like the Gundams aren't like Jaegers from uh, uh, Pacific Rim. Yes. You're well, not like thinking instantaneously. You still have to man controls. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so I would say just a, just a bit of a, a history about Gundam. They the Gundam they went with <clears> was the original mobile suit. Gundam. They, they did 79. the original Gundam versus Optimus Prime. Now, one? Gundam has evolved so much that there are Gundams that can destroy half a planet. Yeah. There's actually a Gundam. The firepower? Or, We're talking I mean, about overall, like their firepower. Superman, and Superman can fly. Well, there's, there's one up. Gundam, like when it transformed into its final form, it brought forth the apocalypse and destroyed all machines all over the earth. And he could be beaten by MacGyver with a paperclip if the story <laughs> says so, you know? Right, I mean, right, like, right. So, the, spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't de seen the death battle. It was Optimus a year ago. Prime beat the Gundam. Of course. Because it's kind of like 2,000 years of experience, though. No, but it barely won. It lost an arm, and it just barely won. What do you mean, it? He it's lost an arm, because of course he would. I don't have an Optimus Prime. Oh, uh, what? This, this guy, right? Yeah, yeah that guy. That the original. Have you seen these little kits, by the way? Like they're little, they're like kind of gum kits, but they're uh, <coughs> the regular buildable models. Yeah, actually, I have yeah, one right exactly. here. Oh, is that Heavy Arms from Endless Waltz? That's my favorite. This was actually like, people think that I'm like good. some soulless criminal, but this was actually <laughs> a gift from my brother <laughs> that I've held on to. Cool. 
And then I have my favorite, my favorite Gundam is that here. one. Heavy Arms from Endless Walls. Hey. A little Zaku action there. <laughs> Got four Gatlin. Believe it or not, uh, Mr. Frank, believe it or not, you talk about Gundam models, right? They actually have... Oh, no. Nerd wall. Dragon Ball Z Gundam model kits. I they have do. one. I have Piccolo in the other room. Oh. I loved. Uh, I loved my Piccolo. <laughs> I have to put him on. Can you sing the entire Piccolo song? Piccolo song. Dai 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 Suki song. Can you? No. no. <laughs> I actually He's know. Some, I, I do know some of the to... lyrics to Dragon Ball Super's, the original theme song. Mm. Yeah. So. I to... So some of the lyrics were, some of the lyrics to the theme song in Spanish were going to be translated as. A los dioses desafiamos, vamos lucha con intensidad, no, no te rindes nunca, hay que continuar, a los, uh, I don't remember the rest of the theme song, <laughs> hey, but like, good. to the gods we defy, sin barreras, no, 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 and, and it was so much you're like i'm a little buzz right now but i can't remember the whole theme song but i like that's one of the things i had auditioned for you look at his dresser yeah. with six beers on it like in power rangers they say in in like power rangers uh they say go go power rangers but in spanish is vamos power rangers so go go versus vamos vamos, sounds good. vamos power rangers they so, filled that area better than go go yeah it should have been let's because go vamos, power let, ranger or something because yeah. vamos means let's go yeah yeah they should have just said let's go power rangers yeah, that's, that's, that makes more sense as a translation just yeah, replete right, yeah. go go but they translated all the songs in spanish Chala, chala. Oh, I love that no one. importa chala chala no, tanto y corazón se de emoción. They they well, actually translated to Spanish. That's I what I had. When, like, when the, uh, the the U.S. one came out on uh, on, on uh, Cartoon Network in mm -hmm. in the nineties, it was like, like dragon, dragon, something dragon, dragon whatever. Dragon. And like I, I I remember kind of being a little bummed out because I loved that like. Do, 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 do. Yeah, like that. Even song, uh, like, the, like the Dragon Ball GT theme song was the last one I auditioned for. Poco, poco me cautiva tu sonrisa. Oh, I like that Toma one. Mi mano y vamos a salir de la infinita oscuridad. Yeah. Bring it to America. Let's make it a heavy metal song. Bit by bit, I'm falling under your, your spell. Your, your smile is all I can see. see to know. Well, Chase, I think someone did. There's a metal cover somewhere on, uh, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. But when they first came into the 90s, they just gave it that Rock the Dragon song. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is, <laughs> I'm, I actually, it's like a mosh pit. <laughs> there's a question there's nothing wrong with me. it. It's just like I got I got used to the other one watching it, you know, and so it was like, it was jarring to me because I'm used to these like happy, like silly songs. The way yeah. it's supposed people to. People ripping their heads we, over. We actually have a question. And it's very off topic. It actually says that this is an off topic question. Jesse, what's up with Power Rangers, Sentai, and their love with dinosaurs? What's wrong with dinosaurs? You know, what's wrong yeah. with dinosaurs? Actually, what do you got against dinosaurs? Believe it or not, oh, died for your sins. Yeah, he Super Sentai sins. has been around for like Bobby 40 died. plus years, and they've only done four seasons of dinosaurs. So it's not really that they have a love. They actually have a love more for cars and birds. <laughs> I don't know. Would you like to see something, Mr. Frank? Ah, the other wall of Goku's room. No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the Power Ranger wall. Are those the Hasbro ones or Bandai ones? No, these are the the new Hasbro ones. That's, those uh, are like, lightning collection. like the, that printing, the 3D printing of the face. Or the, mm -hmm. If you can't the, tell, like, those are the Bandai ones. Those are the Megazords. <laughs> the, those are know. the 93, 94 figures. I actually have a, I have a storage unit filled with Power Ranger memorabilia. Thank you, dear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pardon me. No, you're fine. Yeah, you are good. Yeah, I that's the that's my one uh, the one thing is I don't know much about Power Rangers. I know people who are super into it, um, but I don't I just because I haven't really watched. Oh, is that a puppy over there? 
Yes. <laughs> so his, name. his name is a uh, doggy. He Jr. usually shows up when we talk to him. Doggy about Jr. Doggy Jr. Yeah, he's named oh. after uh, he's named after his my previous dog, which was actually his father. He actually knocked up my neighbor's dog and looked just like him. <laughs> that dog is the face <laughs> oh of Geeks Fire. What a cutie. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a very cute. say hi. Dog. We're gonna sign that dog to a contract. <laughs> oh, he's having some daddy time. That's good stuff. <laughs> Clean that beard. You taste yeah. like ice cream. <laughs> you taste like shame. <laughs> or have y'all been talking about kinks again? <laughs> he, he it's because like every time I get food, he always goes like. He gets like all upset. <laughs> he got scared. He's like, what? <laughs> I can just picture your dog with a Samuel Jackson voice. Hey, motherfucker, you got food? Or take me outside during a podcast. Hey, I got to piss. Like a racehorse. Don't y'all be judging me. I'm going to lick his beard because he got leftovers. Hold him up. Oh, my gosh. He kissed like, me. No. He's kissing like, me. Like, the the me entire Jennifer. conversation was just, oh, puppy. It's all the yeah. biggest dog now. Oh, I'll say hi. But no. is it like... Like, um, you you said... We were, we were just talking about Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. You didn't get to watch Power Rangers. What is... But, like, not Power Rangers, maybe not even Batman, but what is one of the, like, most popular pop culture things that you grew up with that's not Transformers? Um, Ninja Turtles. Well, I love Ninja Turtles. Star Wars, Star Trek, He-Man. Um, I, so you, far as pop you, culture goes, uh, Spider-Man has always been brought up Star Wars. Uh, and? What? Yes or no? I don't know. Let me get. Let me get like, in one sentence or less. Maybe. Oh, maybe Jesus. even more. Did Definitely you like sense. the modern trilogy? I really liked the first one. I thought the Force Awakens was fantastic. Um, I mean, I didn't. the The one that came after that wasn't my favorite. Uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah. 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 I um, think I actually. But I also someone who will disparage people for liking it i there were certain things there are certain characters that i liked i would have liked to have seen finn do more because i was really into that weird buddy cop escape that they did in the first movie um so uh it's just such great chemistry so but that's like me as a fan i'm not the one writing the movie so it's not it i don't have the right to to just like well i want well well, here's here's the thing I agree with you on the Force Awakens. I thought the Force Awakens was great. I think it was the strongest. It, it, played, it played a lot of uh, it, it. It it played like what's the word? Homage or honor? Homage. Homage. Homage, homage. 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 homage to a video game. Harmony. How ironic! It <laughs> played a lot of respect to a video game that came out on the PS3 that was called uh, Star Wars. The uh, the Force. It was called the Force, Force Unleashed. Unleashed. Yeah, I know. Coming. I love that game. It was great. So the base in Star Wars: The he, Force he did Awakens a was voice called... too, right? In um, didn't he appear again in Clone Wars or something? Who? I am actually not sure. <sighs> the VO from the 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 main character in the Force. Oh, Star Killer, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he was remember, in, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Is it? Uh, Josh game? Whedon was such a fan of the video game that he named the base after the main character, Star Killer. Star Killer Base, yeah. Star Killer Base. And like until Disney was it had bought JJ Abrams. It's, it's JJ Abrams. It's... It was, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that's what he meant. I mean, it had a J. It's okay. Yeah. I'm actually not. believe it or not. I'm actually not real good with names unless you're like a. No offense, but unless you're like a Dragon Ball actor. It's Todaro. Frank Todaro. <laughs> Frank uh, Taquitos. Taquito. Yeah, hey, sure. Taquito was next on my list of the ones you would say. I actually <laughs> called you. I don't know what you know. I don't know if you know what this is, but I called you Frank Torta at one point. Torta. Torta. A Mexican sandwich. Yeah, I know what a torta is. Hey, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah. Would you like to be a co-host? You can replace Super Jew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know I love you. Yeah, and you gonna take that from him? If I didn't love her, she wouldn't For be on now. the fucking show. That's we'll just Only because I can't you. do anything with about it. I'm over here. No, nah, dude. Yes. If I didn't love the you, problem I would... is Jesse. If you're gonna talk about all these things, you gotta make it for everybody. You guys, are, you got to now cook for all these people. You have to make them tortas. You have cook. To make I'm yeah, married cook. to them. Doggy. Well, I might cook for Jace. What about for Doggy? I'll I have cook to pay for Doggy. For it, doggy. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I think our I think our deal. dog ate better than I did. We had a Rockwaller, German Rockwaller, beautiful dog. We call him Blackie. He was such a beautiful dog. He was so loyal. Like my dad, we would take some of the wet food and the dry food and mix it together and like 
like heat it up and mix it really well and serve mm. it to him. And like I was spoiled. This dog was spoiled. We went to the backyard one day and we found a finger in blood. It turns <laughs> out the painter to our house tried to rob us and the dog was like, uh uh-uh, uh motherfucker. What a good dog. <laughs> He, like, yeah, that's gross and it's a finger, but what a good dog. The dog, right. he saw the dog every day for a month. And so he said, oh, okay, the dog's not going to do shit. The dog was like, what a smart dog. The Sun's dog down. was like, you guess what, here. motherfucker? I'm raised by Mexicans and we don't like each other. <laughs> I, uh... No, seriously, this actually happened. Did you keep the finger? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is there a ring on it? As as a trophy. Trophy. No, we, we did keep the finger, but... Uh, uh, trophy. It did deteriorate. I was gonna say, unless you put it in something, of course it's gonna deteriorate. Well, no, we give it back to the dog. It's his prize. We didn't have a deep freeze at the time. Now we have a deep freeze. Okay, so the next finger you, just you need did another painter. No, like nobody ever <laughs> fucking robbed us again. Like when one person tries and they lose a finger, word spreads around. Word gets out. <laughs> you painters want to rob this place? Hey man, y'all, y'all like so scared. Y'all, y'all want to rob this place? I'm out. Like, oh shit, he's out. And one, here's the thing, you could be a chicken shit, but when one Mexican backs out, we all back out. Like, no, 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 I lost my, <laughs> like, like, so scared. When there's a zombie apocalypse, that's who I'm tripping. But and when he backs out, I'm out, because I got no one to trip. <laughs> but no, I love dogs. I, I actually prefer like I prefer dogs over cats because. My my mom despises cats. She does she doesn't like the idea of me having a cat because she doesn't want to clean up the hairballs and all that. But I like cats. My girlfriend has a shit ton of stri- well, straight no, no. cats. The reason why I despise I, the reason why I prefer dogs over cats is I already got enough assholes in my family as it is. Okay. Haley's not an asshole. She's a drama queen. No, every cat we've ever had it has been an asshole. Well, you just haven't found the right cat then. No, every Ooh. cat that we started off with like meow and it's like, hey, bring me okay, a beer. Okay. <laughs> Damn, they adapted okay. fast. They did. <laughs> it's harder for them to get the fingers off, though. They got to gnaw a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Then they just leave it I somewhere. Gar- you no, no. Find and, it. And here, uh, Mr. Frank, if you take anything from this podcast, there's one thing that I want you to look up when this is over. Take the backgrounds. I want you to go on YouTube and look up Cat Speaks Dog Ingles Sin Barreras. And I said that with a white boy accent. English called, sin barreras. It means English without <laughs> barriers, but it's in Spanish called English with sin barreras. So what it is, it, it's a, it it's a like commercial a... where this guy's breaking into this house and the dog's like looking at him. He's like, what? And English the cat looks up barreras. and the cat's like, arf. And the burglar out. runs away. Is it it's real? And the narr- like, yeah, this yeah. is real. And the narrator is like, if this cat can learn dog, you can learn English. English English without barriers, or uh, si este gato puede aprender a hablar perro, tú puedes hablar, tú puedes aprender a hablar inglés, inglés sin barreras. Well, I guess you don't have to go see it. So we just, <laughs> he told just you what did it. Was. it. <laughs> no, you have to see it because it's fucking hilarious, dude. The cat looks up and is like bark. Okay, maybe I gave it away. You did kind of. Here's a punchline. Yeah. We'll go see it anyway. Go so Booty anyway. Warrior had a question, although it's not really a question, so I don't know how to ask it. But it's like a weird statement. I've been actually <laughs> avoiding that question all night because that's like the fifth time he's asked that question. He wants to know the story it. behind your beautiful stash. Oh, you know, there actually is a story. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Yeah. One day when hey, he was young. So, I mean, I mean, I, there was a, a time, long time, a long time ago that I used to do this back when I was. Uh, oh, gosh, I, I did steampunk stuff for a while. Otherwise known in 2006 as Goss Discover Brown. Uh, but um, whole new color palette. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but no, no, like my mustache grew out, and I didn't want to cut it. But every time I went into the booth to record, I was eating my own hair. So I got wax to smoosh it, and then it just kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. And now this happened, and I look like a railroad tycoon from the 1800s. Yeah, you do. Actually, you look like Johnny Depp's stunt devil. That's sure. too. Why not? I was about to ask you for an autograph. Yeah, I love you the Empire like, of the Caribbean. You look like a snake oil salesman. I, I, you look I, I like you could star. Like that. You look like you could star in your own pirates movie. And you can start you subconscious now. Do it because a pirate is free. You are. Starscream was a human, 
That's no, what no, his no, face no. Like he, he looks like he, he, he looks like he looks like that one guy that was in that pirate movie that was on Pornhub. <laughs> We don't need to see your history, Goku. No, you know I don't like that show. <laughs> this took a turn. No, we've been trying to get on port. It's we're, we're, taking we're, quite a few we're, turns. We're, we're debating on getting... Uh, port, starboard, I don't know. We're debating on uh, wow. broadcasting our our podcast on Pornhub because apparently Pornhub will show 1080p He's anime. He's debating. For real? Yeah, no. Pornhub doesn't just do porn. They do I anime saw like a full. I saw like a full anime movie. <laughs> Yeah, on they'll Pornhub do full like, anime like a ten. No restrictions, nothing. They'll do better quality than some of the streaming sites. <laughs> I did More not. More you know. <laughs> I'm actually like as being demisexual. I can't. I can't watch porn, but I can appreciate the art. Beep, 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 beep. You know, if you, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Because I'll point it's out like, that someone misspelled possum in the chat. Possum? There ain't no rednecks here. That spells a possum. Chinko. Pachinko, we love you, Pachinko. That's Pau Sam. Pau Sam. It's an O. Oh no, they want to know: do you have a, o. do you as a as a as an actor as a voice actor? Do you have a posse like a rapper? Also, it's two S's and a U M. Yeah, oh, but it starts. Oh, if I have a possums. <laughs> An opossum posse. Do you have a posse though? I have a posse of opossums. Yes. A posse of possums. Of imposter opossums or they just, they just impersonator opossums? Am I the only one that kind of wants a pet possum? Yes, they could be uh, very sweet. I've they seen a couple of them on at night. I'll try to catch one for you. All right, <laughs> <laughs> I have them in my backyard. Oh, 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 oh. possum! Right? <laughs> what the fuck? This is like he's like Gundam. Boom, boom. A possum. Boom, boom. Quick. It's like, real. Bro, it's just very well like trained. Goku, I can see the future, and I knew what you were going to ask for. That's insane. Bro, where'd it go? I've had that. I've had. I, it came back to life, and it ran away. <laughs> Hashtag it's eat, don't keep. <laughs> I, are you magic, Jace? <laughs> that's cool. Yes, he is. Wizard. Jace, I, actually, I like the word possum because it has a silent O. So that's how much you've had possum, to drink. Like, Jace isn't it. really here. It's an optical illusion. I fade in the background. Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, smoke and mirrors. Jace is like the tooth fairy. It doesn't really exist. <laughs> I'm like a, a tooth arch. Even though I believed in Santa Claus until a fucking few days ago. Surprise! A moron fucking did it. Until Super Jew was like Santa Claus don't exist. Surprise! It was me breaking into Wait, your house. I need my finger back. <laughs> by the way, I'm 32 years old and I believe in Santa Claus. Well, oof. oh damn! You know what? I guess you kind of did her. A, you, she did you a favor because you pretty much ripped the bandaid out now yeah. and later. I, it could be worse. Somebody could have walked up to me and be like, "You want to touch my meat?" Would you? <laughs> A lot of inside jokes. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll tell y'all the story later. Um, actually, Patreon exclusive. There actually, you go. we do have a question that you can answer. Maybe it's not comfortable to answer. Have you ever had some fans that are so overzealous? They like, oh my god, I want to stalk. They don't say it, but they're you feel like you're being stalked by them. Oh, there she they are is, right now. I can she see her. Is right next to you on the podcast right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> to the left. <laughs> I mean, I, I've never really felt uncomfortable and like there are people that are like super, super psyched and you just kind of have to remember like you were there too at some point, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't know, like that's well, the really thing is, touchy, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> like, the thing cool. is like, I guess uh, I can't relate because okay, okay, okay. like, I don't know how to explain it, but since I was a child, like, oh, the voice actor of Goku, that's your uncle. <laughs> like, you know, you find out that you're somehow related to some kind of person on TV growing up in a small village in Mexico. Literally? Actually, yes. Oh. I'm related to a couple of voice actors for a couple of cartoons, not anime, cartoons in Mexico. Hmm. And uh, my dad was fuck i can't believe i'm saying this when my dad came to this country illegally he was adopted by a cajun family that's why i grew up mexican and cajuns i grew up with black culture and mexican culture that's why i am the way i am but we have them to blame i've never been starstruck like meeting celebrities like oh you're the voice of this person that's cool as fuck you want a drink fuck yeah (laughs) 
And I've and I've learned like the hard way that celebrity like voice actors, especially voice actors, um, they're very, very, very down to earth. Like they are people they just wanna like show up, do a good job and have fun. Because if you don't if you don't love what you do, then what's the point? Hundred mm-hmm. percent. And I and I and I can relate to that because like because I didn't want to say anything to them until we did the podcast with you. But I actually enjoy doing panels. I actually do enjoy doing the podcast. I enjoy the, as a person that suffers from a lot of anxiety and depression, I enjoy the attention. <clears throat> That's why I want to do something every day. Like, like, I don't know. Have you ever been, have you ever been a guest on a podcast? <laughs> yes. Okay. Have you ever heard but of a recently? No, 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 stop. Just in general, in general, like in general, have you ever heard of a podcast that will run five days a week? Um, five days a week. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But how, how, no, 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 no. Damn, threw him off. No, no, no. Okay. No, because I've heard of a couple. But okay. how, like, how crazy, like, even if you've heard of a <laughs> podcast that will run five days a week, like, how uncommon and how crazy is that? It's not common at all, no. No, absolutely not. Like, absolutely. it's actually, cons- it's actually frowned upon in the cosplay, in the podcast industry. Like mine, a- mine was a once a week, but it was a radio show that turned into a podcast. Mm-hmm. As a podcaster, <clears throat> I mean you you know how it is like you burn if you do it more than once a week you burn through you burn through guests and material like that it's it's a little different for me because for me every podcast had like three to four days of prep because i'm mm. reviewing stories making sure those stories are backed up and like there, there, there was a, it was a little bit different like it wasn't mm. just like straight up interviews it was there was like a big news element. right we had so. one guest on monday we had a guest on Monday that we had booked a week in What's advance. Up? I'm so sorry. What's up? Yeah. I'll be a few minutes. No, okay. Sorry about that, guys. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. We had a guest yeah, on Monday right. that we booked like on the Tuesday before in advance. Okay. Yeah. By Tuesday, we're like, okay, we booked this person for Monday. We're good. J- uh, Chadwick Boseman passed away. Yeah. And then a couple other people passed away as well, including the, sis- the twin sister of the original actor of Sarah Connor. And like that whole podcast, that whole podcast was just dedicated to like talking about these people that had passed away during the weekend. Yeah. But, but prior to that, we had canceled our, our podcast for the week. Cause we thought we were going to hit, get a hurricane. We get hit with so many things. We get hit with like, like guests. We have a guest, but unfortunately this shit happens and doing it five days a week. Like, Doing it three times a week is uncommon, but doing it like every day of the week is like mm-hmm. almost unheard of. The full time job, yeah. Right. And like for you, we've been prepping for you all week, but sometimes we only have until the morning of to prep for a guest. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, who's our guest today? We got to learn as much as we can. And sometimes we, we learn shit about them as we go through the podcast. Like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Okay, you're this, this, and you do this, and you're that kind of artist, and you do all that that shit. And, like, you know, it is a lot of work, and people, like, people don't realize how much work goes into, like, that. And I know, like, you yeah. can appreciate, like, how, like, the day of, much less, like, like, you have a whole week's worth, like, you have a whole month worth of content in a week. Mm-hmm. Especially, yeah, the way you guys are doing it every day. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Like, you guys, great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, like, Rachel, like, we... Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, did it in the very beginning, too. I would point that F out. F in the no, chats. Okay. Super okay. Jew. No, Super Jew. Super Jew. Like, no, Super Jew, we, we appreciate her. I fuck with her all the time, and she fucks Yay. with me more than I fuck with her. With protection. Nah, that's about it. <laughs> She's There's like, at least a no, six inch screen. No, no, she'll be like, shut up, Goku. That's because you're prodding. I'm like, shut up. I'll be like, hey, hello, welcome to Geek Star. Shut up, Goku. I'm like, <laughs> and I'll be like, she'll talk. 
She'll talk and I'll be like this the whole podcast. <laughs> That's his thinking face. <laughs> and she's thinking laughing because it's true. Thinking of ways to kill me. <laughs> no, but we, we really appreciate you for being on here. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. We, 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 we've had, I don't know, have you ever heard of um the epic trailer guy, guy. John Bailey? He, I just told you he was on a <laughs> show on with the him. Same show. Okay. Yeah, he was, Y'all uh, he don't was, realize was that I was trying to make sure our guest knew who he was. They were uh-huh. on the same show. I didn't know that because I don't. Because you don't listen. No, because I produced. Not only do I produce the show, we actually had a private conversation that I have a daughter that I have to look after, who is <laughs> currently doing testing right now. <clears throat> I don't want to get into that. No worries, no worries. I keep forgetting this is a green can. Yep. <laughs> right. No, I have a daughter who tested low for white blood cells. Oof. So thing. I have to be there. And if something happened, like, <laughs> let's say something had happened to her today, I would not be on the podcast. Jace and mm-hmm. Super Jew would be running the podcast. Ah, <laughs> real shit show that'd be. Yeah. For... <laughs> No hey, transitions. He, no, no but like, songs. I don't, I, look, I met, I Just met, get... I met Sammy Hagar himself. I met Allison Chains, the band. I met Johnny. I've met, I met lots of people, and and I will never put a celebrity over my daughter. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> I will never put anyone like I'm. And, I, I, and I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I will ne- I will put my daughter before I put religion. That's how it should be. Right. My daughter is name for those of you wondering, my daughter's name is Zelda. Because we couldn't agree on a name. We couldn't agree on a white person name and we couldn't agree on a Hispanic name. Fake one. Right. <laughs> Zelda, it's pretty good. It's a real name. It's a real name. It's pretty good. It's any, any series yeah. of letters is a real name. Well no no, there's actually I mean, a meaning behind the name Zelda though. Yeah. We named her Zelda because I wanted the world to call her princess besides myself. Right. It's just, and also like Robin Williams is Yeah, I was about Zelda. to say. Yeah, because he loves the games. I didn't actually know that he had named his daughter Zelda until after yeah. I named my daughter. Did you, did, you, did you mention Robin Williams? Is that what you said? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was I that rumor they that. put, they did like a small tribute to Robin Williams during Breath of the Wild, apparently. I actually didn't know that though until after my daughter was born. That's no, but like. It's good I, company. No, but we, like, as a, as a podcast, like. We want people to know that we're humans. We're we're human beings. Whether you're voice actors, whether you're improv, whether you're stand up comedy, whether you're podcasts, whether you're live stream gaming, yep. whether you're like The Rock, Eddie Guerrero, Brock Lesnar, Legacy Fighting Championship, Bulletair, Ultimate anyway. Fighting Championship. Whether no matter what it is, we're all human beings and we're all here together. At the end of the day, great man. And we bleed too when our cats uh, oh. slice well, us up. Dogs scratch fuck, our fuck chest. Cats. Yeah. Unless you lose a finger <laughs> from my dog. <laughs> Sonic, we're like blood brothers now. That's it. Yeah, we have a lot of things. I Sonic noticed that too. Face. Like, as soon as Sonic said he was from the same area of New York as Frank, Super Jew didn't exist. Oh, yeah, thanks for inviting me, Super <laughs> Jew. So, Sonic, remember the old neighborhood? <laughs> I had the McMansion. We haven't got to talk about it yet. Jeez. <laughs> It's fine. Well, no, no. it's awfully late. Yeah, yeah. no, no. We've never late. had a guest on here this late, but you, like, thank you. Surpassed, I can't, I can't, you surpassed John. We only had him on for two and a half hours. Actually, no. We had John on here for an hour and a half because he was gone for, like, an hour, half an hour. Well, okay. I watched, no. I watched that video. <laughs> it's a good video. <laughs> I watched that video, and trust me, he was not here that long. But, no, like, you are... Like, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the yeah. podcast. You're amazing. Of course. Thanks for having me. This is, this is a lot of fun. And we guys. know it's late because it's dark in your it's background. Dark in California dark now. now. We saw the sun go down. That you can see all the weird magic wizard lights all around me. The freaks yeah. come out at night. Ooh. The freaks <laughs> get come those out Tessa at coils night. out of here. Now we'll have to get Jason on, and then we can yeah. have all three of you on do a whole like. Prime Wars thing. Yeah, y'all can swap so, spit and yeah, yell Jason pizza. Jason and I, uh, instead of our scotch, <laughs> drink scotch on, uh, on camera. You guys can drink scotch can and we'll just be here reading the comments. For Not it. even. We'll be like off screen like, oh yeah, we're producing. Ah, yes. I got Super- a beautiful bottle of Cowila in the other room that I will crack open. 
But no, we we would like to plan something with you. Delta HCon is in July of 2021, and we would like to invite you, not as a guest of the con, but as a guest of Geeks Five Ever. Yeah. Hit, hit me up. You guys got my contact yes. information. We'll, okay. We'll get us something out. That's right. We will buy you tacos and call you pretty. <laughs> He's like, well, you didn't say all that. Tacos. <laughs> No, that's a sweet. That's sealed. No, the deal. no, no. When I say tacos, I mean authentic Mexican. You can taste the sweat, struggle. <laughs> tacos, Jeez. like mm. I like. I like that taste. The struggle, like uh, oh my god, tastes like third world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go go. Sign us out. Right. Uh, well, there, okay, you, uh, okay. Before we sign out, does anybody have any last minute questions for our guest? Oh, uh, actually, I have one. <laughs> okay, uh, um, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be right back, like in thirty seconds. Uh, <laughs> Super Jew, you're in, you're in charge, Super Jew. Oh shit! Uh, I was gonna ask a question. Was um, was there a uh, was there a character you did that you you were like you when you auditioned for it? Uh, was there one that you were surprised? Oh, I got the call. I was like, oh, wow. Okay, this is awesome. I, you got. Was there any character like that? Or is this just like, oh, no way. No doubt they'll get me or anything like that. Uh, like, w was there uh, something that I was surprised at getting? Yeah. Yeah, like an, audi like an audition you received. Like, hey, uh, we want you to audition for this. And what was like a reaction? It was like, surprise. And it's like, oh, my. Yeah, every single thing I've ever gotten. It's that's, <laughs> that's like every job ever. <laughs> Like, they're still paying me for this. This is amazing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I've just I've been very lucky. Uh, I've gotten to work for some amazing people. I mean, it sounds like a generic answer, but I can't. No, no it's okay. Wow. About it. Um, there are there are roles that like I'll get, and it'll be something outside of what I normally do, and I just mm -hmm. I'm so happy to get to do that. You know, mm -hmm. right? Like instead of constantly being uh, one tip type of thing when you get that one thing, but oh, this is an exciting puzzle that mm -hmm. I get to, you know, really chew on this and, and right. do things that I don't normally do. So I think that's, that's kind of like what you're saying, where I, I get very excited when I, when you get, because there's a lot of things, uh, I don't know if the term is called auto casting sometimes where the uh, casting director will just be like, mm -hmm. that guy can do this. Yeah. We need a lizard man, Frank, Frank <laughs> here, you know, like, all right, I'm bad now. uh, not that that's what the lizard man sounds like, but, uh, there's a, a lizard lot of man enemies. from Boston. What's that? It's a lizard man from Boston. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a dock <laughs> worker. Uh, but um, that was weird. Uh, but yeah, like I love like getting uh, animal stuff, creature stuff. Um, I've been getting to do a lot of like dogs and cats and whatnot now, and I love it. I love like piecing together what uh, like the language of an animal is. You know, like instead of the dog just like rawr, 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 you know, like to actually like when the dog is emoting to try to communicate something, figuring out, like, again, for lack of a better term, like a language that an has to communicate, <laughs> whatever, human concepts. Uh, so those, I guess, that's the best. Cool. That's really cool. That is really fascinating. <laughs> is there anything um, that you would really like to voice? If you could, like, say, okay, this is going to be a show, like, what kind of character do you want to be a voice of? Yes. <laughs> yes um, well, so you brought up Cobra Commander before. I'd love to t take a shot at Cobra Commander if that ever comes back. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, of course, like, there's, like, the fan part of you that wants to voice all of your favorite things. Like, I really want to be Skeletor because I love Skeletor. But the other side of that is originating something that, uh, like, like with Mugman, mm -hmm. getting to be, like, the first person out that really uh, gets to make those voices that you know, however yeah. many years later, someone else will be like, I love that voice. The way that I'm like, I love Skeletor, you know? Yeah. So it's a uh, food. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> he loves the food. food. Yes. Voice yeah, so, so I guess, yeah, the answer really is yes. I okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody says, who is doing rooms at Delta H con? Yeah. Um, all of us. Plus Frank, Frank is cool as fuck. <laughs> like, like I told y'all Frank is the only person if he was a guest at a con I wouldn't rob him <laughs> <laughs> or at least just take like low end stuff leave me with something to get home with no, you, you know how many times keys. I've walked up to it like a voice actor hey look over there hey look somebody's humping each other and they're like oh shit let me take money out of their 
little quick what about little John? box here yeah, that John Bailey Goku would rob you. John Bailey does debit and credit only. Ah, oh, yeah, he's safe. How can I steal from him? That's not even fair. <laughs> Goku, remember, I'm coming. I'm doing the best room. Fuck yeah. Oh, question. Uh, have you played Persona 5, and would, what would your pals be like? I have not. Aww. Have not. That's right, Booty Warrior. Not everybody's a weave. Dude. I just haven't really had a lot of time to play games, and like when I do, it's usually on the Switch before I'm going to bed, and it's like Animal Crossing and Legend of Zelda. So, I mean, um, like... Be could, last question, last this, question you know? for the night. All right, last question. Then I'm going to go eat. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's a good idea. Because you got oh a life. Um, game, <laughs> no, game, hungry. game, game. Like, What's if that? you could play any game, like PlayStation 2, PS3, PS4, Xbox, PC, Nintendo, doesn't matter what. Any console. Or non-electronic. No, no, no. We're gonna go with. We're gonna go. Oh. We're gonna go with two. Game, electronic and non-electronic. Okay, fine. Games. What would you play? Like, what would be the one game you would play at the end of the world? The end of the world. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well, I can answer that uh, just from my own footprints right now. Uh, that I've abandoned a lot of modern games and have been replaying Metroid. The yes, original, love the original Metroid. Uh, just because we've been talking about RPGs all night, and Chrono Trigger is of course up there, but the original Metroid was just—it mm -hmm. was streets ahead. It was streets ahead. It was like a it's like a being a rat in a maze. Let me put it like this: I have for my PlayStation Four alone, I have a four terabyte hard drive that's almost filled. On my PS3, I hit that limit a long time ago. PS2, well, four I mean, of them things. Okay, dude. Go go. Sign us off. Yeah. No, no, no. But I want to <laughs> eat too. I gotta go buy wanna, food for my brother. I want to go to bed. Y'all are some bitches. <laughs> no, but um, tabletop gaming, tabletop. What would it be? Second, I'd D and D. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, Honestly, like, because it's what I know, mm -hmm. and yeah, what I've played the yeah, lot. Baby. That's gonna be a BotCon, right? The Transformers D and D game. You try and teach a bunch of new people. If anybody actually wants it, I'll do it. But anyway, you got to come with us to BotCon so we can play some That's Transformers right. D&D. Geeks 5 ever <laughs> will be at baby. BotCon from now on, running around the hall screaming, Mexican! Americans! <laughs> Mexican! Mexicans uh, are like vending that. machines. They take your money, but they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> Dude. I'm talking about myself. I don't okay. represent my entire race. Oh, booty warrior! What you got now? Oh boy! No, but thank you. No, no, we're done. Thank you okay. so much. <laughs> I'll thank message you. it to him. Right, no, 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 thank you so much for being on here. Of course, thank you, man. Uh, you were there, like, amazing. A... You are. Our... We've never had a guest on here this long. By nine o'clock, like, yeah, I got shit to do. I got a wife. <laughs> I mean, he kids. probably does. Yeah, he said girlfriend. Uh, she cooked dinner about an hour ago. Yeah, I'm just yeah, hanging. It's, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> Tell you what, if if you and your girlfriend ever come, if y'all, if you and your girlfriend decide to come to Texas, I will buy you both tacos. <laughs> Throw some molly in there, and I'm in. And I'm talking about like, like taste mm. the poverty. Tastes like Thorwell Country tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I can taste the struggle. You okay, bro? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Goku. Tagline, do you still remember how to do it? Ever taste I do actually. I'm oh, just fucking with him. All right, uh, one more thing though. Uh, which is there anything you like to plug in or anything like that? Oh yeah. Um, jeez. Uh, Cuphead. Yeah, Cuphead's coming out. Uh, I don't have, know exactly when, but it's gonna be out on Netflix, and it's gonna be freaking amazing. So I never played know. the video game, do, but uh, I am gonna watch the uh, show right now. Is uh, War for Cybertron? Uh, Transformers yeah. on Netflix. Uh, other things I'm in, Japan Sinks is on Netflix too. That is, you know, get get a box of tissues because it's you're gonna cry. A uh, bunch of other animes and stuff, but I mean that's whatever. You can buy it. Uh, TV is the website. Uh, Instagrams, 
Frank T- uh, F. Todaro. Yeah, it is. I think Frank Todaro. Yeah, you, you got to help me, right? You heard it. Uh, yeah, yeah. You heard it here, <laughs> folks. Uh, make sure you, whenever you make a post, make sure hashtag Frank Tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to change my name. At that point. There not? you go. Are those wings on your chair? What's that? Are those wings on your chair? No, it is a cloak. I was going to say, I looked like wings. I was like, damn. Oh, when oh, you said wings, I'm like, I'm like, definitely when you said wings, I automatically thought buffalo wings. I'm like, mm. no, damn it. I kind of thought wings like that, too. I was going straight to like Edgar Allan Poe. They look like ravens. I automatically like, thought the like, food. I'm like, chicken. We're taking this Lovecraft. There are chicken. like two ravens right over there. Uh, no. that you- Never more. Dude, Dude I grew up, on, I grew up on Houston Independent <laughs> School District public school it's food. Crows. So pigeons oh. and crows and ravens. That's what we... Mmm. Mmm, <laughs> crow's feet. <laughs> Whenever they serve fried chicken, we noticed there were less pigeons outside. <laughs> All right, no, but we will talk with you after this podcast is over. We'll we'll yeah. set up something. We'll but thank you so much for watching this podcast. I know we ran an hour later than we normally do, but this yeah. has been this has been such an amazing podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube, hit the thumbs up, and hit the bell for notifications. Now you can hit the bell for all or some notifications, but if you hit the thumbs up or thumbs down, the way the YouTube algorithm works is it will share the video with more people the more thumbs up we hit. Now, the thumbs down means that it's not going to share the fucking video with anybody. Now, if you're following us on you Facebook, make sure you hit the like button and follow us as well. We are Geeks 5 Ever. Thank you for joining us this week. Tomorrow, we're going to read some shitty fan fiction. <laughs> Goofic. <Goothic. laughs> May God have mercy on my soul. And then May don't God forget Sunday. Mercy. Sunday. 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 What a burger. Versus in and out in the food cast. Battle of Who the will Earth. reign supreme. Guest starring Blastoise, a cosplay <laughs> personality in Texas. Now, I'm Jesse Goku. Thank you for joining us, Frank Todero. And always, I'm letting everybody know to stay Uh-oh. classy. Bye, Felicious. Bye. Adios. Guys, take care.